What's up, everybody, and welcome to the show. This podcast episode is brought to you by IBOW Training. As you know, we talk about training pretty frequently here on the show, and the IBOW has some amazing people that they work with in their network. Are you a designer, rapper, sign maker, or beyond? If you want to invest in your creativity for the future, IBOW Training is the right choice. IBOW is the nation's first training organization to offer training in all aspects of the rap industry, from quoting, design, printing, production, and installation. They offer a variety of training options, such as training at your shop, group training classes nationwide, and even private design and print profile training through remote login. With trainers nationwide, IBOW offers support day and night by phone, and many of their trainers are within a day's reach for emergencies. IBOW is growing and will continue to support the industry in a positive manner. For more information, please visit IBOWtraining.com. We are also brought to you by We Print Wraps. We Print Wraps is the industry's number one source for wholesale printed wraps. How easy is it to order wraps? Well, all you have to do is sell the job, go to WePrintWraps.com, choose your desired film for the installation, upload your design, and if you're not a designer, no problem. They can design one for you and get your wraps delivered right to your door. They offer free nationwide shipping all across the U.S. and Canada on all orders over $500. And for exclusive listeners of the All Wrapped Up podcast, you can get 5% promo code when you type in the word All Wrapped Up at checkout to save on your next order today. Less risk, no overhead, wholesale printing. See why the industry pros love them. To get more information, visit WePrintWraps.com. Today's guest has been with this industry franchise, Image 360, formerly Signs by Tomorrow, for about 15 years now. He has grown up the ranks with training and leadership. Please give it up for the great and powerful Ryan Warner. What's up, everybody? Thanks for tuning in to All Wrapped Up Podcast. We'll be interviewing industry-leading rap companies to share tips, tricks, stories, and more. Ryan, what's going on, brother? Not too much. Not too much. What about yourself? Oh, just getting back from work and dealing with nightmares, trying to put out <laughs> fires, you know. <laughs> yeah, a, a typical, typical day. Typical day. <laughs> what are you, uh, what are you working on this week? Uh, this week's actually kind of been a little slow for us. Um, not too much going on at the shop. Some signage here and there. Yeah. Um, we've got some, stuff that's coming through on the weekend that's going to be pretty interesting nice. uh doing some uh tractor trailers you just the tractor portion of them and it's just striping on them so it's pretty easy yeah. and like i kind of got my feet wet on the job last weekend because they needed some turned around right away so it was like literally they called us on friday and they're like can you come out tomorrow and put some of these graphics on <laughs> Yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> oh, working on the weekends. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't like to do it, and I try to avoid it as much as possible, and, and this is kind of the way it's always been. But, you know, when a client comes to you and they're like, look, this is the only time these can be done because it's the only time the vehicles are in the facility. Like, right. well, you know, I understand. You got to do what you got to do. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then, like, just as far as actual signage in the shop is, it's just been a typical typical week so far. Just you know the normal, everyday run of the mill signs, which is good. You know, it's like yard signs and core class and easy foam core signage and stuff like that. So yeah, the shop that you work out of, um, it's called Image Three Hundred and Sixty. You guys do a, mm-hmm. a, a lot of diverse things. Is you know more than just vehicle lettering, wraps, and graphics, but a lot of signage and. Uh, yeah decals and stuff like that yeah yeah we really like to think of ourselves as a a full service you know solution center Mm -hmm. not necessarily signage you know exclusive right um you know we can provide services in a wide range you know so it's like as limited as we are sometimes um we try to be as broad as possible yeah, yeah. I mean, so that, we produce a, a 
a, a wide array of signage. You know, it's like any any and everything. Any do you guys so, install it as well? Yeah, we do. We do a lot of installs as well. Um, we you know have someone on staff who's really good with you know that kind of thing and handling installing you know um, site signage and and the whole nine yards. And then when it comes down to like wall murals and lettering and stuff like that that gets installed, you know, myself or one of the other guys will go with me and we'll knock that kind of stuff out. That's amazing. That's cool. How many, how many people at the facility work with you? How many employees are there? So there's a total of 11 of us that work at the center. uh, And that includes my boss, you know, the owner. He's in the, in the shop 24 seven with us. So that's uh, good. yeah, it's always nice to have that leadership right there, you know? Yeah. Because it, it just, it helps keep everybody organized and driving forward, so. Keeps everybody on their beneficial. toes when the owner's oh, walking yeah. around. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It, there's some of the guys that come into the shop that, you know, and some of the new hires when they come in, it, it's tough for them to adjust to that person being there at all times. You can tell, like, they're really nervous. It's like, yeah, whatever. Right. You know, and, and like the funny thing is, is, I've known him longer than I've known my wife. So come like, on, to me, it's, like, it's, it's sad, but it's like no big deal. You know, it's like, oh, whatever. It's, just, <laughs> it's, just, it's like working with your best friend. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's awesome. Uh, and, you know, so. that's, that's cool. So everybody's got a different, um, kind of lane in the in the business of what they do, what they specialize in. What what type of divisions do you guys have that everybody is delegated to? So we basically kind of break it up into uh, basically three. We have, you know, sales and within sales there's about two there's two full time salespeople and then, you know, some of the designers will dabble in the sales a bit. Our office manager she does as well, the owner does. I occasionally get involved in the sales ends of things. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we have, you know, the design and there's three full-time designers. And like I said, they kind of sometimes do sales. Sometimes our designers will even come back and up with production. So it's like everyone's kind of fluid in their position, even though there's like, you know, these set guidelines. Right. Um, we have currently have on staff one person who runs our printers, digital printers. And then, you know, production staff and, and then an installer. And it's kind of like everybody fills in where needed and, you know, does the best they can. Nice. So you guys cross pollinate as far as if one's down, the other one can step in and they're able to take over that position for the day yeah. or an hour if someone's left or whatnot. Yeah. That's always yeah, good. It, it, yeah. It comes in handy. You know, because it's like, oh man, life happens. You know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It always happens at the most impromptu times. Yep, yep. And it's like, oh, you know, I'm sorry, I, I gotta go. <laughs> right. But there, there's always somebody, and it's amazing. There's, there's, there's always somebody at our center who's willing to step up and you know get things done. Yeah. So it's 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 a good group of people to work with. That's good. That's good. And you know what? To have everyone diverse in in different lanes like if if the designer's out for for some reason and you know there's nobody to profile anything for the day that means production ain't getting done if you were to mm-hmm. step in well i don't have an install for a couple hours you can step in profile the day's graphics that way the production can keep rolling you know it's always yep. good when you know a little bit of everything about the the industry because god forbid if you don't then what yeah kind of just stuck yep yep you're just you're just dead in the water waiting for someone to show up you know and it's like yeah that bedtime is it's money <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> it's, oh yeah it's money lost yeah relying on relying on other i mean we always say you know hire people that are smarter than you hire people that hire people that know it better and do it better than you or or just know how to do it and sometimes it's almost better just to figure it out so just so mm-hmm. you know you know right yeah it, it, it also makes it easier than to hire someone who's smarter than you because you're like 
oh yeah, I've done this and I don't know, I don't know what you're talking about at all. But right. it sounds like you know what you're talking about because, you know, I, I understand the problems you're saying. I don't yeah. understand the solution. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Clearly, give me that solution. <laughs> right. <laughs> clearly you understand how to solve this problem. I just know the problem is this. <laughs> yeah. How can we fix this? <laughs> right. Two yeah. heads are better than one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh man. Yeah, it's 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 crazy. I I like that, you know, as crazy as it is when you're running around with your head cut off with the man, one man shops and you're able to do all that. I think it's it's very important to have employees or at least a couple to delegate yeah. those different services cuz when you when you burn the candlestick on both ends, it it's it's not fun. It's it's definitely yeah. not fun, you know. No, it, it it isn't. And like sometimes the most challenging thing about having a team is using the team. Yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, we're great. Well, this is awesome. We have this great team. And then I find myself like trying to solo stuff and I'm like, what am I doing? I'm an idiot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or like, or just, micromanaging. It's like, no, yeah. let them do their thing. Yeah, yeah. Just back away. You know, sure, you could probably do it faster or maybe better, but, you know, they got to learn. They got to grow. Right, right. And, 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 and you know, you got to pass the torch once in a it, while and just let them get burnt once in a while. It happens. Mm -hmm. It's a learning curve. Just learn how to not do that again next time and remember it as a lesson and don't take it to heart. Yeah. And there's, yeah. not, there's nothing worse than you know, screwing something up and feeling bad about it and, you know, second guessing yourself, like, is this the right decision? Is it? No, no, you can't. You got to keep pushing forward through that because that will, that will hinder you moving forward. If you keep on thinking oh, of yeah. that type of nonsense, it's just, well, you know, I was talking about this off here with you, my situation, and I'm yep. just like thinking and thinking, what could I have done to fix things? And it's just, yeah. you know, I know what I have to do now. And tomorrow's going to be a better day, and I'll take care of the situation, and it is what it is. Yeah, Less, yeah, lesson it, learned. It, it, it's live and learn. Like, you, you can't can't make progress without, you know, making mistakes. Right. <laughs> so yeah. Like, yeah. So, 100%. That's the way it goes. Like, you know, everything everything you do in your life, it's like, oh, I, I'm here because I've made mistakes that, you know, I've corrected and got here. It's like. It's just the way it goes. So your professional life is the same way, you know? Right. Right. I love it. So, so give me, so how did you get involved? <clears throat> Without going <laughs> back into your, your backstory, how did you get involved yeah. with, with 360? Well, prior so to I, 360, it was something else, but. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, um, was working at a gas station and I had been there for like two years, two and a half years. And I was sick of it. It was time to move on. And during that two, two and a half years, there was one or, you know, a handful of consistent customers that would come in on a daily basis and kind of get to know them. Yeah. And one of them happened to be the current, or well, the former owner of the signs by tomorrow that I work at now mm -hmm. that is image 360. So, Image 360 used to be Signs by Tomorrow. Um, the, you know, the name change and stuff came with uh, other changes as well. But, you know, this was 16 years ago now. So wow. six, 16 years ago, you know, working at a gas station, the owner of this, you know, sign shop would come in every day and I would talk to him and chat and we kind of got to know each other. And one day he came in and he goes, well, I'll see you tomorrow. And I said, no, you won't. He goes, what do you mean? And I was like, I I'm done. I, I, I put my two weeks in. This is my last day. I, you know, I'm done. He's like, well, where are you going? And I said, I have no idea. Cause huh. I, I literally put my two weeks in and was just like, uh, all I know is I don't want to be here. <laughs> wow. What were you doing at the gas station? Just pumping or mechanic work? I like this. So the gas station is like a typical East Coast gas station where it's like, they sell food as well as, you know, fuel. So it's like, you can, it's almost like a fast food restaurant mm -hmm. <laughs> with a gas station attached to it. Yeah. Like so the ones you see weird. with like Dunkin' Donuts inside. They build yeah, their own stores. Yeah. Similar to that. Yeah. Similar to that. It's called, it, it's called Sheets. And Sheets. like, 
Yeah, with a Z at the end. So, mm. it, you know, like working there, I was, I started, you know, just as a cashier and worked on my way to shift supervisor in a pretty short period of time. So, mm. you know, I, I was just done. It's like working retail is tough. <laughs> it, it, it's a tough crowd. <laughs> yeah, I I don't really care for people so much. And that's not, <laughs> that's, that's a, not the job to be in if you don't like people. Yeah. <laughs> I would say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it was like, it was time to move on. And I mean, I was young. I was 21. So it was like, you know, I, I figured now's the best time to do it. Wow. Yeah. So he's like, you know, well, we're not really hiring anyone right now, but come down, you know, and interview and we'll see where it goes from there. And I was like, okay, you know, I'll, I'll be down when I'm done up here. And you know, the day ended, and I, I think I was working third shift then, so, like, it worked into the morning a little bit. And I went down there in the afternoon, and the interview process was <laughs> extremely basic. He's like, you know, Rolly, he walks me into the back, he's like, okay, so this is where the work happens, like, this is kind of what we do, and he explained it to me a little bit. And, of course, 16 years ago, it's, it was all cut vinyl. It, right. You know, it was there, we did it. They did have a printer at the time. But it printed the paper, and like that was it. Well, there's three substrates you could print in: a paper, a self-adhesive paper, and banner material. Right. But it, you know, 99% of everything was cut vinyl. And he's like, you know, this is the process of what we do. He goes, uh, "Do you know how to read a tape measure?" I was like, "Yeah, I know how to read a tape measure." <laughs> so he got a roller, and he like he you know points to the roller. He's like, "All right, show me where inch and three sixteenths is." Yeah, show me where this is. I showed him. He's like, "It's okay." Um, when can you start? <laughs> <laughs> that's all it took? Is that a really freaking yeah, tape measure? That, yeah, that was pretty much it. <laughs> like, that yeah, was a good when interview. When can you start? I was like, um, well, I mean, I could start Monday. Yeah, and this is a Thursday, I believe. A Thursday. He's like, I, I could start Monday. He goes, all right. He goes, come in on Monday. We start at 8.30. I was like, perfect. Walked out, drove home, and realized on the drive home that we had never discussed pay. <laughs> or anything. I think, I think that's a little yeah. important. <laughs> you know, and I was just like, well, I mean, what's the worst that's going to happen? I'll go in there on Monday, we'll talk about pay, and, you know, we'll go from there. So that was that was pretty much the introduction to the industry. So that's, so that's crazy. So you, so you got hired. His, yeah. his, we, we get to Monday. You show up. How does the conversation yeah. go? <laughs> the, the, the conversation was basically, I go, so we never talked about how much I was getting paid. He's like, well, how much were you making at sheet? And I told him, and he's like, well, okay, I'll give you this. And I was like, Perfect. did you, did you, <laughs> did you bat it up a little bit? No, I didn't oh. even bat it up a little bit. He was oh. just like, it was more than what I was making at sheet. And at that time I was living with my parents and like, you know, my cost of living was so low that I just, I didn't care. I was making more than I was at sheet and I wasn't at sheet. So. It was all good. It was all good to me. That is so funny. Yeah, I mean that's part of being young and dumb, right? <laughs> you're just like, I, as you get older, you realize you never give them the first price, or you never give them the real price at first. They're always gonna yeah. come down. No one ever right. te- and you know what? No one ever teaches you that in high school or college. Nobody ever says uh-huh. that. That that's no. that's normal. Right? How, how come they wait for you to figure that out later on in life? Well, well, they don't want to be the person that the owner comes back to and blames for ruining it. <laughs> you know, well, like, I, yeah, I guess, I guess. I don't know. I, I, it's one of those life experiences that like nobody prepares you for. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, hey, don't take the don't take the first offer. You know. <laughs> right. There's you're something more, called negotiation. More, <laughs> right. Yeah, you're more valuable than you think. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, some of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know where you go with that, but yeah, yeah to an extent. <laughs> yeah, to an extent. It, it's crazy. It's 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 one thing business 101. Never take the first offer. It, it's yeah. it's and they never that never comes up. That's amazing. Yeah. So what did you think yeah. about your first day at work? Did you have to deal with people? Did he make you deal with people? <laughs> Yeah, the the first day was actually really easy because at that time there was two people working in production. We had one designer, and it was him and his son, who was the current owner. Um, and, and it was basically like you know, here's vinyl, here's how you weed it, 
there's the trash can. There's the dumpster. Make sure that the trash is in the dumpster at the end of the day. Yeah. <laughs> make sure, you know, make sure the floor is swept and it's cleaned up. And, you know, like, here's the, at that time, we were running with a um, cut list for the next day. Yeah. So we pre-cut all our material for the following day. So it was like, here's the cut list. Learn these materials. Learn where we store them. Learn how to cut them. You know, and make sure everything's ready to go for tomorrow when we come in so we can start producing signs for tomorrow because, you know, today was producing signs that were ready yesterday. Right. Always a day day in advance in production, and then it's yeah. assembly the following day. Yeah, yeah. And it was funny because, like, I started, and the two guys in the back, they're, you know, they're good guys. And the the guy that I was replacing was like, he's like I'm not even going to bother to remember your name because I'm out of here in two weeks. Jesus. <laughs> so he's, like, <laughs> he's like, your name is crap. I was like, okay, whatever. I, I don't care. <laughs> so... So it's just like, you know, from day one, I was cracked. And, it, it, you know, uh, it's uh, it's kind of funny how it starts from that, you know, small beginning. You know, the guy who takes the trash out and the guy who cuts the material for the next day. And the guy who gets stuck weeding, you know, the uh, 12 lines of gouty hand tools. Oh. <laughs> well, that's so – that, those were kind of – you know what? You know, him – you got the easy route. You got the the question of can you read a tape measure? Then you hired. Yeah. I got yeah. I got the hey can you weed all this vinyl without screwing it up? <laughs> and hopefully you don't quit before I realize that you might be okay at it. <laughs> right. You know. Right. Yeah. It's, it's funny how a lot of these jobs are like it's trial by fire, and once they realize that you're okay with the fire, they're like, oh okay, you're good. Yeah, you, you you've you only have to go through that fire the first week. After the yeah. first week, and they realize you're not gonna walk off because yeah. it's it's too hard, or you can't do it, or it's tedious, or you know whatever. Then you're pretty safe after seven. You know, you're five days in. You know. Oh yeah, yeah. Once you once you establish that trust, and, you know, and you build that relationship just that little bit. Right. If they're not, if they don't see that you're, you know, good for the job or bad for the job in those first five, you know, days, whatever, 10 days, if, you know, if they're still like on the fence, like clearly it's probably not ever going to work. So yeah. cut your losses now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, don't, don't try and force anything like that first, you know, and even now when we're hiring people, we give them 90 days. And right. Right. I always feel that. You know, the, the most important part, the most important time comes almost a week after they've been working because after that week, the newness wears off and that either you'll see their drive to produce wear off or you'll see it continue to increase. And like right. that first week is like, it's critical. Yeah. I agree. I definitely agree. But even, yeah. you know, but you know what's worse too is that when you train somebody, and show them the ropes and whatnot, and they don't show those signs till like six months, eight months later. You've mm-hmm. invested your time, you invested your knowledge into this person, hoping that oh, they yeah. can produce and help generate more, uh, more business or help out in time. Because God, time is the one thing that we all need right? more than anything. Money will oh, yeah. come. The time is gone. Like five minutes yep. ago when I talked to you, that's gone. We're never getting that yep. back. And yep. when they walk off and they leave, they go to another shop. They want to start their own business because they think it's easy. And it's just mm-hmm. you fucking start over and over and over. It's just – it's mind-blowing oh, yeah. the, the turnaround. And, it, and I want to go with just like more or less like installers, the turnaround in installers. Because I don't yeah. think designers designers know when you when you're designing you you know what that entails. With an installer, right. it's different every day, different tasks, yep. different different rules on installing. It's a different car, and if they don't mm-hmm. take that drive to just continue to, you know, gain that knowledge and respect it and 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 go for it and 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 help as a team, and they want to go off on their own, then that time you already wasted is like. That's it. Yeah. You feel, you yeah, feel, it, you feel it, discouraged that you spent right. 
it's a, a bad it's a bad breakup at the end of the day yeah you know yeah it, it feels like you've wasted time like yeah. and, and and when time is so critical it, it's like i don't have this to waste like I, I, in here i feel like i've wasted it on this person right and and that's one of the things we've experienced recently is like hiring installers we needed more installers and you know, we brought this guy on, and it, it seemed like he was going to be a good fit, and he he wasn't there too terribly long, and it was like right away he started making mistakes. Yeah, and you know, I, I I'm in a weird position currently there where like I'm the production manager, quote unquote, and like everybody's using in production, everybody kind of views me as their boss and as their superior, but I don't ever feel like I am that. Yeah. position <laughs> yeah so it's like i still consider myself just a production guy yeah <laughs> so it's kind of it's weird to be in that situation where like you know I, i'm responsible for training these people and getting them up to speed and yet i'm their boss but yet i don't feel like i am it's it's fun it's challenging but so anyway we, we hired this guy on and it seemed like he was going to be good and then like he started slacking and i you know started getting on him a bit about, you know, making corrections to some of his stuff and it just wasn't happening. And it was like, oh, this sucks. We got to let him go. And it, it really sucked bad because that was like one of the first people that I personally interviewed and I personally, you know, took him to the boss and said, Hey, I think this is someone we should bring on board because, yeah. you know, this is, this is how the interview went. This is what I think of him personally, you know, like shows potential. It, yeah. Everything. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it was very frustrating to see him start to, you know, slack. And, like, I kept, you know, trying to give him more room to, you know, work through the kinks, you know, or, or you know, whatever it took. And yeah. and it just seemed like it was just, it just it went nowhere, you know. <laughs> you know, and, and, and this is my personal opinion on it. it it's it, it it's very finicky to be a rap installer you either have it mm -hmm. or you don't have it i yeah. i feel like you can learn it you know oh yeah you can learn it but i think like people when people get it they just they get it it's so it's so weird i've seen people pick up a squeegee understand the way the film works for some reason and start laying down square footage and i'm like holy shit I didn't even mm -hmm. like have to tell you nothing. Like you, you got it. Like you're kind of like as cliche as it is, you're a fucking natural. You know what I mean? This right. is so weird. And then you know what it is? You start fucking saying that shit and it gets in their head. You know what I uh -huh. mean? Oh yeah. Uh -huh. I'm the boss. I'm this. And then they screw up once and then you yeah. have to tell them, Hey, you can't do it like that, man. That's going to yeah. fail. That's going to come back. And then it's, it's like, Boom! All all the walls come down after that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Then they yep. don't think you know they're good enough, and then things start dying down. It's crazy. It, yeah. It's just it's mind blowing the amount of people I've seen come in and out of the industry, come out of the woodworks years later because it's what they know, but they didn't want to put in the the work, the time, deal with the kinks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's my ball. I want to say that's probably the biggest, uh, biggest revolving door in, 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 in our industry would be the in installer side of things where it's, oh, yeah. it's always different people, always different people, always trying to hire installers and, and things like that. You never, once you find a good designer, a good designer is a good designer. Like, I don't think right. that's a cush job right there, a designer. Yeah, it, it, there there are aspects of it that are very cushy, <laughs> and then there's stuff that I I hear all over here our designers talking about, or they'll be talking with a client. I'm like, I am so glad that's you and not me because right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. the, the, no can you change the phone but, number down two inches? Can you move uh, this over to the door a little bit? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or well, you know how I told you this is what I wanted. Yeah. yeah. That's not what I wanted. This yeah, is actually what I wanted. It's complete. It's the complete wrong thing. And then you have right. what they wanted written down right in front of you. You're like, right. I thought I hit this on the nail. Right. Or, was, yeah. the, the one, like I, I have done some design work in the past at the shop because it's one of the things you know we all we all fill in everywhere. Right. So like the the one thing that drives me nuts about clients, 
And it was without fail. At some point, they'll make this conversation or make this comment where like, I just want it to look cool. Yeah. And it's like, that's, yeah, that's what I want too. But you have to understand cool is relative to taste. Yeah. Like my personal idea of cool is not going to be your idea of cool. <laughs> right, 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 right. I might so be like, thinking something completely off the rails for you. Right, right. Yeah, it's like, you know, like, it's, I'm sorry, cool is not this, like, defined set thing. It's like, it's personal. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, it's, it's not it's me variety. driving the thing every day. It's you. <laughs> right. Yeah, I don't. Look, I don't have to look at it every day. Right, right. You do. Yeah. I look at it, you know, for 14 hours maybe, and then I'm done with it. I wash my hands of it. It's gone. Yeah. And if I see on the you highway, don't... it just gives me yeah. the, you know, gives me the satisfaction that another truck's out there, like, wrapped that right. I've done. Right. And I get to point it out to my wife as we drive by and go, hey, look, you know who did that? Yeah. <laughs> just Which... toot, toot your own horn a little bit. Give it a couple beep yeah. beeps. Yeah. Like, guess yeah, who yeah. Did Which that? she always – it, it's always followed by an eye roll and like yeah. a, yeah, I know, you did it. <laughs> Stop being oh, so cocky, not... Ryan. Right, yeah. God. Oh, it's not impressive. Yeah. No. What do you no. think, you're the only guy in town doing it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the funny thing was, too, like, talking about the only guy in town that does it, like, the guy that we just hired, maybe, I, I was like, two weeks into him being there, he was like, I used to tell people that I was the best graphic layer in the East Coast, and I was like, Oh, oh, here we go. Oh, no. <laughs> Best graphic. Whoa, where, where did that come from? <laughs> Best graphic yeah. layer. That's a new one. Yeah. Yeah. I like yeah, that. I, said, and I was just like, interesting. Yeah. Like, 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 yeah, like you were saying, it, that it's, they think they're good and like you, you build their confidence and then they hit a mistake. And it's just like, it just falls apart. <laughs> yeah, it crumbles. It's not even falling yeah. apart. It's like, it's like you crush their dreams. It's like, mm -hmm. dude, come on. I mess up all the time. I just know how to fix my mess ups. You right. haven't, you haven't quite gotten there yet. I'm yeah. teaching you a lesson. That little cut, yeah. listen, trim it over here a little bit. Nobody's ever going to see it. Done. Just don't leave it hanging out like that. You know what I mean? Right. It's just little tricks. Like, I don't care what anybody says. Your first cut of the day is not your best. Oh, no. It's just your cup of coffee, you get the jitters, <laughs> you, you know, the caffeine, oh, yeah. the Dunkin' Donuts is, you know, getting there. Yeah. Or if you're, you're, you're savvy, you get a little Starbucks, but, uh, <laughs> you know, you, <laughs> you're, still, you're still using the same blade from yesterday. You haven't broken off a fresh one yet. You, and yesterday you're like, ah, oh, screw it. I'll just let this blade go. I, I'm just about done. Yeah. <laughs> and then you forget. Yep. It happens. It happens. Oh, yeah. But, you know, how do you fix it? Well, you, you, you know enough to fix that mistake and then you're like, ah, oh, okay, well, this is the first one. The first one's out of the way today. Now should right. be smooth sailing. Hopefully. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. It, and it always goes one of two ways, right? Like it's either one mistake and then you're perfect or it's just one mistake leads into mistake two, leads yeah. into three and Ooh. four. And before you know it, you're like, okay, I should just stop now, take lunch, and yep. I'll come back, and and maybe things will have changed. <laughs> Re regroup, you know, wash yep. your hands. Yeah, you know. Yeah, can I burn this? Let's let's just burn this down and start from scratch. Yeah, walking around with sage. <laughs> Fuck yep. it. Come yeah. on, we gotta get the good juju in here. You know. <laughs> Get that good sign. Get that good sign. You going? Oh man, that is that's. I mean, it happens. Not everybody's, not everybody's perfect. But fixing our mistakes no. is like fixing our own mistakes is kind of like a day in day out type of thing. Oh yeah, it's normal. It, it absolutely is. Oh. And, and the one thing that I try to, as I'm like teaching the guys in the shop and, you know, showing them the ropes and, and showing them how to do it. The one thing I like to always point out to them is like, look, I know you shouldn't do it this way because I've done it that way. And let me tell you what, that way sucks. Like yeah. you're going to, you're going to regret doing it that way. Yeah. Try this, do it like this, you know, do it this way because this is why this way works. You know, this is why I feel you should be doing it this way. Try that and let me know what you think. You know, and a lot of times they're like, "Oh yeah, man, that was so much easier," and and yeah, that was that was perfect. They're like, "How'd you fix that mistake?" It's like, "Oh, it's just you know, like, oh, the laminate went a little crooked or there's a little wrinkle in it. What should we do?" Oh, watch this. Just grab the laminate and jerk. Right. <laughs> you know, and the lamb, 
the lamb comes right off. Yeah. And they're standing there. You know, they're with they're the, standing there with their mouths on the ground going, how the hell did you do that? And it's like, it's just lamb that you just put it on. Dude, he has not had time to do anything. <laughs> what is the biggest yeah. piece you've ever ripped off after lamination and that you got a wrinkle or a crease somewhere and you're like, hmm. <laughs> the biggest piece I ever ripped off was I, yeah, I had laminated, it was like 210 inches by, I think we we're at like 52, 52 wow. inches wide by 210. And like it started to go south. And I was like, nah, I can, I can correct it on the laminator. And, you know, I kept trying and kept trying. I was like, well, that area will be, you know, hidden. You won't see it. And then it got to the end and I'm sitting there looking at it and I'm just shaking my head going, this is never going to work. So I just grabbed it and started, started ripping, you know, and like <laughs> pulled it all off and started again. One full sheet. It, it took, it took a couple, you know, pulls. But I think maybe I've spent about like five minutes pulling the laminate off. <laughs> was was the print one continuous print or was it broken yeah, up? Yeah, it was it was it was solid print. Holy shit! Yeah, it was solid print. And I thought I was ballsy. I seen <laughs> our production person right rip yeah. off like a sixty inch piece, yeah. long by fifty four, and yep. I never seen I've I've never seen that ever in my life. I wouldn't even have thought to attempt such a thing i would have been like yeah okay we're throwing it out we're starting over it is what it is yep. and yep. when she was like oh just hold the vinyl down and i'm gonna pull it i'm like what you're gonna you're gonna what <laughs> come on stop yep. you're like you're playing games she goes no just yep. hold it down real tight i'm gonna give it one good sweep and that's and we'll find out if if it's a if we're gonna be able to save it or it's gonna come off in pieces and we gotta scrap it Right. Oh, yeah, it's, it's one of two. It's, it's yeah, two. it's it's a gamble. It's fifty fifty at the end of the day. It, but right. it's worth and, trying. Oh yeah, yeah. Because when you weigh the cost of oh, I now have to reprint, so I have material ink, and now this wasted lamb. Time that's expensive. Yeah, right. Time. Whew. Oh, I could just only waste the lamb in it. Oh, that's yeah, worth let's it. Try that. <laughs> that's worth the fifty fifty chance. You yeah. know. Oh yeah. Oh my God. I watched her rip that thing off and I, I literally my jaw was on the ground and my eyes were popping uh -huh. out of my head. I'm like, how did yep. you do that? That was magic. Yeah. yeah. And, I and, know. and it came off and it, and you know what's funny? It's like, I, I, I don't dare to do that with an EcoSolve, but an HP, no. we printed on no. HP and it's, yep. we're printing on Avery. We're laminating with Avery, uh, yep. everything. And dude, that sucker came right off and I was like, huh. Learn something new today. Yeah. <laughs> that it, it can come off that easily. It's, but it's got to be, as soon as you do it, it's got to be done. You got to rip it off. Oh, it's You can't let yeah. it sit and wait till you're done. Like, no. Rip that sucker off like a Band-Aid. Yep. Do it quick. And, and it has to be the HP latex. It, yes. It has to be. You cannot. You can solve. Forget it. Oh, it will take it, the, forget it. It'll take the print up with it. Done. Oh, yeah. And and I know because I've tried that. We we used to run solvent printers in the shop, and I've messed laying it up, and I'm like, what if I could just pull this off? And like you start pulling, it's like, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, it ain't gonna work. It, even with an outgas, even with an outgas, oh. it won't work. It's just no. the eco is just different than the than the uh, latex. Yeah, the latex. It's it's the the whole reason why you can do that with the laminate on latex is because the optimizer agent that HP uses actually inhibits adhesion of the laminate to the print. Holy shit. We're getting scientific now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. And, I, and I know it, it, it is that way because we used to have issues constantly with laminate adhesion to print once we switched over to latex. And it was like, you know, why is this? And it wasn't until we got to the three series of the latex printers in which they introduced the optimizer that we had the issue. What is the, so the optimizer is something new or is it something it's, that's just built in? It's newer. So like, you know, they had the HP two series, which was the latex printers. We had a 2000 something or other. I don't know. That was a 98, well, actually, a 104 inch printer, latex uh -huh. printer. 104? Holy shit. 
Yeah, yeah, because we used to print large banners for a, a local baseball team. Um, they're not like Major League Baseball or affiliated at all. Yeah. It's like their own. It's like the Mid-Atlantic region, baseball, whatever. So they're like, you know, local guys. But still, they run a stadium in, you know, in New York, Pennsylvania. And, you know, we provide signs for them. And they had the need for large banners. So it was like it made sense for us to have a large format printer to, you know, be able to produce these in-house. So 104-inch print, yeah, that's, let me tell you what, loading 104-inch banner material is fun. Oh, um, how much is that way? Even uh, just a fifty, even even I, just a fifty-four inch ones, the beasts. Oh yeah, yeah. I know, I know. I used to. I, this is how dumb I am. I used to load those hundred and fours by myself. Oh, I pick them up by myself and put them on. How's your like, back? Like, I think, like it, if you got it to, a, it was easy to do if you did it the way that was like the least amount of lifting possible. So like. You no, know, you could you could do it yourself. It just sucks. Are those front? Are those front? Um, yeah, yeah, they are front loads. Front loads, yep. yeah. Wow. Front load, and then it weaves in behind and comes out. Right. So, so we didn't have adhesion issues with the lamb on the two series. They would, you know, adhesion was fine. Um, that large two series HP printer also had a tendency to try and electrocute you. And at one point, it literally caught on fire as it was printing. Come on. So, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, there was flames coming out of the printer. And I'm like, yeah, that can't be good. Oh, my God. What, what, is that like a recall thing for, for but, HP back then? No, it was just it was just a poorly designed printer. Wow. <laughs> and, like, they – because all they did was they took the 260 and basically doubled it. So they just put two two sixties together, and you got, you know, your hundred and four inch print area. Jesus! But they didn't properly. Well, and this wasn't even HP's printer technically. They bought it from somebody else. Mm. Wait, now that was the, that was the one thousand that they did. This was a, an actual an actual HP design printer. So yeah, it was an HP design printer. But the door that you would open up to be able to view the media when you loaded it, mm. it had none of the heating elements attached to it. So every time you would open the door, the heating element would open with the door, which would cause flex in the cable that provided power to the, you know, to the unit. And that flex of a cable, well, I mean, you know what flexing cables do, they wear out and break. You know, so you wear out and break, and this machine runs on two-phase electricity. So it's not like it's just your normal plug into the wall and go, you know, you have to it's two, get a, 220 get, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever it is, whatever two phase is. Yeah. I don't really know. It's got the oh, side, it's got the sideways plug yep, on it. Yep. yep. One sideways plug. Yep. And yeah, so there's, there's a lot of juice running through there. And oh, yeah. it's enough that, you know, you, you wear that cable down and break the, you know, the shroud and now all of a sudden you have an exposed cable and that door is metal and sparks go flying and things catch on fire and, you know, it's fun. Wow! Wow! Do you guys still have that that printer, or do you no, upgrade? We, yeah, we upgraded. We went from that to a three. No, actually, we let's see how'd that go. Went from that to a three sixty five, mm -hmm. and then there for a while we were just running two printers in house. We had a the three sixty five and a HP. FB500, which is a flatbed UV, hybrid flatbed UV printer. And then recently, like a year and a half ago, we got a 570. 570 uh, latex 570. Have, yeah. you, have you had any issues with the 570s? Oh, yeah, all the time. Fuck, dude. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we always got like, we got two. We got two. Yeah. And it, seems, it always seems like one's always down all the time. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Hey, does yours, do they ever make like a weird clicking, dude? like oh, grinding noise one, and HP is always like, we don't know what that is. <laughs> one just started doing that. I swear to God, uh, -huh. uh last Thursday. Okay. Uh, -huh. we, uh yeah. I don't deal with the printers. That's in our production. That's in our design yeah. lab. So yeah. I was walking through there and I was going to talk to one of the designers and one of the designers was loading the media in. Right. Uh 
Mm-hmm. And yep. I heard the thing clicking. And, mm-hmm. and we, we've got we got Emily, which she takes care of all the printers. She cleans them. She maintains them. She writes down how much printing we've done for the day. Like, if there's anything, oh, nice. anything that has to do with those printers, we have everything documented day in and day out how much we print. And nice. she heard that clicking and ran right over. And it was coming <laughs> from, it was coming from one of the spindles underneath the uh-huh. printer. That would yep. feed the media up, and I'm like, and I'm like, Em, it's coming from here. It's not up in in the box. It's coming yep. from down here. And she's like, yep. I've never heard of that. She's videoing it, you know, because uh-huh. we have to send it into uh, the HP, um, uh, I don't know, clinic, whatever yeah, the, the fuck you, yeah, the support thing. Send them a video, yep. download it, let them know what's going on, and if it's underneath warranty or whatever the case may be, they they figure it out. But it was coming from yeah. the uh, the spindle underneath. It, mm-hmm. Is is that what was happening with yours? Yeah, yeah. What what, what yeah, was it? it? Was... I didn't hear anything after yeah. that. I walked away because <laughs> if something happens in there, it, it's fucking cold red. Everybody fucking oh, yeah. out of the way. I gotta take care of this. Right. Let the let the professional take care of it. And... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let let Emily, the professional, handle it. Yep. Sure. That's it. it. That's it. Just let her do her thing and, and we'll figure it out after and nobody will lose any limbs today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As long as you don't have an HP bag on your shirt, you're fine. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Th- those guys well, might as well camp out at our shop. You know what I mean? You, oh, yeah. I know. Like, the, and all of our HP products we keep under warranty because that warranty pays for itself. You know, like yeah. by the end of the year, the amount of parts and labor that you put into them is like, it's ridiculous. Oof, so, it's a lot. And it's, you have it's, to, it's oh, common sense. <laughs> it, it is, it is completely a great printer, but it's so high maintenance. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it makes me sick. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and I'm not even the one like dealing with it. And it makes, I just know what it takes to deal with something that's down and dealing with mm-hmm. like, you know, making sure it's underneath warranty and this, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, man. I just know what it takes. And that just thinking about it gives me a headache. Like never yeah. mind dealing with it, you know? Oh yeah. And that, I, I did that for years. Like that was one of the positions that I worked into, you know, at uh, signs by tomorrow was, you know, I ran the printers. I, you know, it was my responsibility to maintain them, to operate them, to, you know, keep them up to par and track everything. So, like, I was intimately familiar with HP and calling them. <laughs> wow. Wow. So, it, and it was kind of funny. Like, I just recently passed that off to somebody else in the shop. And he's done an excellent job of taking over. You know, and he still comes to me, and I still help him with stuff here and there. But, you know, for the most part, he's, he's running with it. And that's it's awesome to see that happen. It's right. nice to so pass the torch, doesn't it? Yeah, it is. It's really <laughs> nice. It, and like to see him deal with the same issues I did, it's like, yeah, that sucks to be you. Um, yeah, figure it I'm, out. I'm, I've got other problems to worry about. Yeah, about. <laughs> yeah I've got my own uh, fires, yeah. fires to, to tend to. Like, yeah, yeah. It, it's like this. They'll come to me and be like, "Have you ever seen this happen?" And I'll be like, "Oh yeah, call HP." <laughs> it's just like. I was afraid you were going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> it's the answer for yeah. everything. Call HP. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, in the end, the, I know the issue went with the 570 was like, HP was like, yeah, that's weird. We, we've never seen this before. We don't know what's going on. We'll send the tech out. We'll send some parts and they'll, you know, they'll fix it. The tech comes out, puts those parts in and it's still making noise. Mm. And then they're like, well, we have no idea what this is. Like, is it affecting the way it's printing? Is it, you know, is that one? Like, no, it's printing fine. It's just making weird noises. <laughs> right. So I, I then, like, we kind of let it go for a little bit because it was intermittent. It would depend on the roll that you loaded and, like, how you loaded it. Right. If it's so a could, heavy, a new roll or half halfway th- through the roll, roll type of thing. Well, right. And we could never really, like, pinpoint it because we wouldn't really track it that accurately because it was always like, oh, this is such a hassle. It's like, it, it still operates fine. Right, right. So it kind of got, you know, put on the back burner and then eventually we got tired of dealing with it again and called HP and they came out with another round of parts and another tech and in, installed all new parts and 
I don't even know what the parts were, but it seems to have fixed it for now. Um, the other week it did start making it again, but it hasn't since. So well, it's just kind of been like, oh, okay. Finicky. Yeah, but like the 570 is such, uh, such a pain to deal with. And I'm glad that I don't have to deal with it on a daily basis. Uh, like the 365 is good. I, I, I love the 365. But the 365, yeah. I think volume wise, I don't think could keep up with the 570. No. Oh, no. No. The 570 is like the creme of the creme. There's nothing above the 570, right? You'd have Not to go. Not as far as roll to roll. Right. Now. I mean, the 570 is it for right now. They're, you know, their new flatbed latex, that R1000, that thing will take over for everything eventually. Yeah. I just heard yeah. it's, it's supposed to be coming out or came out or. Yeah, um, last year, they, they introduced it last year, like the end of last year, and everyone started buying them, like around October. Yeah. And there's a waiting list to even purchase one now. Like, Jeez. it went from, they're, they're selling them faster than they can make them. Wow. Is that much of a need for a flatbed? I don't see, I don't see a flat, for me, I don't yeah. see a flatbed being useful in, in, the rap side of things it's just so here's the crazy thing about it is it's a hybrid flatbed so you can print roll media on it as well as flat hard substrate now how now now it's when you say flatbed i haven't even done any research so this is me yeah. being fucking ignorant i, I probably should have <laughs> you, like looked one up before bringing it up a rapper. <laughs> yeah you know it's just that i just smaller. know i just know the upright ones you know what i mean when you say flatbed yeah. i just think of a yeah. a four by four or a four by five flatbed right. with the right, head right. being um being you know adjustable left right. and right and then it moving back and forth down the board right right yeah. How is that how is that useful for the rap for the rap side? Indulge me so, in, 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 in right. that. <laughs> <laughs> because it's a hybrid flatbed, and even the S D five hundred that we have is considered a hybrid flatbed. Mm -hmm. It basically operates almost identical to the latex printers. The main difference being the fact that instead of having a particular point at which you load the roll on, and then weave the media into the machine. The belt, there's actually a belt on the machine that pulls the media through the printer and across the printing flatten. Mm. So, so like for the flatbed that we currently run, the UV flatbed, you know, we, you have exit and entry tables. The printer itself is only 36 inches wide by, by like a hundred inches long. Wow. So, and the print, the print area is 64 inches in width by whatever your length is. You know, it, it, the software maxes out at like 3,000 some inches. So it's super shit. long. Yeah. So you can, you know, with the R1000, it's the same concept where it's a flat bed in the fact that where the printing happens is flat, but the media gets there via a conveyor belt. Mm. And then there's entry and exit tables that have rollers on them. But having that print exposed, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. With, you know, ambient yeah. areas, it, yeah. it, we don't see any type of, like, so mess just ups. Like, <laughs> like I, I just feel like it's like when it's in its box and it's coming out, it's getting right, right onto that take up reel. And there's really not much of a gap of exposed printed meat. Right. Even, even though it comes out dry, it's exposed. I mean. All right. Yep. So, so take that, that notion that the, the printing carriage is not enclosed and now enclose the entire thing. Like. Oh, this thing printing, is enclosed then, you're saying? Yeah. It's, it's enclosed. It's oh, not shit. Like, yeah. It's not simply a four foot by eight foot area that the carriage travels across to print. It's the carriage only travels left and right across the rails, just like, you know, your latex printer. Right, right, right. But the way the media gets fed into the machine is completely different. Understood. You know, it's, on, it's like, it's like a giant pizza oven, you know, this conveyor pizza oven. Right. So where's, 
So where's the printer sit? In the middle of the table? Yeah. Yep, pretty much in the middle of the table. No shit. Like, it's the printer itself, the, the R, well, let's, let's just talk about our FB500 for now because I know that intimately, unfortunately. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's the printer itself, the footprint of the printing unit is 36 inches wide mm-hmm. by 104 inches long by maybe 52 inches tall. Wow. It's a big so, boy. Yeah, it's big. And then on either side of the printer, so the input side and the output side, you have tables with rollers or just flat tables that your media kind of glides across and into the printer, gets printed to, and then exits. Right. And that's that's why it's called a hybrid flatbed, because it's not true flatbed, you know, where you have a flatbed that the carriage traverses. This is a flatbed that the media traverses. Mm. While the carriage remains stationary. My see, is left and right in movement. I've always I've always seen them out and I always feel like when I see them they're just like not in a box, they're just like almost like a laser type of thing. Yep. Like laser a cut. Yeah, exactly. That's how I would perceive them. Yeah. I, oh, I yeah. and and I'm so ignorant to the printing side in, in the <laughs> flatbed uh, you know yeah. perception. It, Printers, yeah. okay, I get it. Rollins, Mamakis, uh, Mutos. Oh, I'm a, I'm a, yo, <laughs> wow, what do you got a fucking vendetta out of Mamakis? <laughs> Holy shit, like threw well, up. <laughs> uh, uh, the Mamakis are, are what we started with. Tell me that. about it. What, 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 did you have a bad fucking day with one? <laughs> Oh man, we had bad days with those all the time. <laughs> oh. Worse than the HPs? Oh yeah. Holy oh, yeah. Because, shit. Like the thing that was bad about the Mamakis when we got into it is there was no support. It was like, here's the printer. Still there's no. the ink. Yeah. Good luck. It it was still you new know, like, back then. You're going back what, two thousand three, two thousand four? Yeah, let's see. We got I, I started there in two see, when was it? I was twenty one, so it was like two thousand and three. Oh man, and then it was probably maybe only three years, and then we got our first uh, solvent printer, first Amaki JV3. Right, I think it was that started it all. Yeah, and that you know that was the start of it, and and at that time we didn't even buy that from like Advantage, I think it was, or somebody like that. And Sign warehouse. <laughs> yeah, it's like here's the printer, here's the inks. Good luck. Um, yeah, here's Flexi. Mm-hmm. Um, good luck with all that. Let us know how it works out. Yep. You know, and like things would go wrong with us, and you'd be like, well, who do we call? And it's like, well, there is an 800 number on the back of the printer. You could try that. Isn't it funny <laughs> when you buy shit? Yeah. Like, uh-huh. you would think it would come with like some type of guideline, directions. Not, not, none right. of that, none of that came with any of that. It was like literally, nope. this is what we have. Figure it out for us. And, and like it's crazy now when we buy a printer from HP, they're like, oh, not from HP, but from a you know a, a dealer seller of it. They're yeah. like, yeah, yeah. They're always like the sales guys, like, yeah, we got the support team. The guy's gonna come out. He's gonna train you on it. You're gonna know how to run it. And I'm just like, that is amazing. You don't well, know how much I love that. <laughs> well, they learn from their mistakes. They don't want to oh, have yeah. the phones ringing all goddamn day long and trying oh, to yeah. troubleshoot something over the phone when if they had someone there setting it up. Because you need someone to set it up, you can't. There's no way somebody would be able to set that up by themselves. No, I, I'm still no. illiterate to certain things, and oh, yeah. and have them come in, get you set up, print a couple samples, answer any questions, and then they're out mm-hmm. of there. And then the rest yeah. is yours. Go make money. Yep. Yeah. You know. Yep. Yeah. Oh. Oh yeah, it's it's so backwards to what it used to be. Because I mean, like before, you'd call the sales guy, you know, and you'd be like, "I'm having this problem with the printer," right? And you're like, "Oh." I well, gotta, I gotta. I now have to take time out of my day and not sell to help you fix your problem when money I've already made. You know they don't want to do that. Well, there's no, no blame them. I, I wouldn't right. do it either. Right? They created. They created something for us to use, but they haven't yep. even figured out how to use it themselves. They yeah. They, with the, the with the guinea pigs, you know what I mean? Right. And yeah. and, and, and yeah. that it, it put that on top of new media, like uh-huh. when 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 3M came out with the V1, it's oh, like, yeah. hey. 
You can print on this. Uh, Thanks. we don't know what's going to happen, but let us know what you guys do and, uh, we'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah. you, you know, there's oh, no support yeah. um, in that. <laughs> right. Hey, here's the thing. It's cool. It's, it's great. You can lay it down. No bubbles. Right. You, know, you can, you can stretch it up to 30%. <laughs> you can heat it up. You can ball it into a ball. You can undo it. You can heat it and you can apply it. This stuff's great. It's going to change the way you do it. And it, it absolutely did. But it's like, Oh, it's, it's lifting out of recesses. Oh, it is, right. huh? Hmm. Probably hmm. <laughs> fix that. Yeah. Oh, you, you know? lay, you lay like, too much ink on it and it's like a wet noodle it, or. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's You're like, trying to install it and it's just like, it's a soup. Yeah. It's like, take I the back of paper off. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Right. And it, and it, it right. just automatically tacks. You're like, what the hell is this? Right. Yeah. And it, it sticks to itself. It's like right. ink sticking <laughs> to ink and you're like, that's not how this is supposed to work. Uh, something went wrong somewhere. Like, let's yeah, and let's then, backtrack. Uh, right. Oh, did you laminate that? Laminate. Oh, what is that? What is that? <laughs> what? Frog juice? <laughs> right, yeah. Liquid lamp. Liquid lamp? No. Yeah, we can do that. No. Oh, dude. Yeah. I've seen it all. Uh, yeah. I've seen it all. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I've i been through those growing pains, too, at, you know, at, at our center. It's just been like, you know, we started with those JV3s printing the media that was like, oh, here's banner material. It's great. It's just vinyl. You know, we've been using it to produce banners for years. Laying vinyl down on top of this stuff. It's great. Buy it in whatever colors you want. Stock whatever colors you want. Sell those, you know. Right. And all of a sudden, this new thing comes along, and it's like, you can now just print directly to the banner. I'm like, right. wait, so I don't have to weed vinyl and apply it to the banner anymore? Oh, that's like, such a suck. No. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh. nope, you just, you just, you just print to it and it comes off the printer and you cut it down and you reinforce it and you grommet it and it goes out the door. And I'm like, oh, wow, this is going to be awesome. <laughs> Done. <laughs> you know? Sold. <laughs> yeah. Where can I buy so, it? <laughs> yeah. And then it's like, oh, you know, and it, it was that same iteration from, you know, solvent printers to the flatbed. It's like, you know, boss comes to me and he's like, I want to get this new printer. And I'm like, okay, cool. You want to get a new printer? You always want to get a new printer. What is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's like, I want to get this flatbed printer. And I was like, okay, what's it do? He's like, you can print to anything that's flat. And I was like, okay, this is cool. I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> How do we do that? He's like, we can print right to Coraplast. I'm like, no more reading for sale sign. Oh, All right. Yes. <laughs> I'm game, you know? So, it, it, you know, it's being through the growing pains of, you know, solvent printers and then, oh, here's this new media and laminate it. Well, how do you laminate? Oh, well, here's the laminate. I need a laminator <laughs> now. I need another machine. <laughs> another five grand. Like, yeah. We used to laminate stuff by hand. Oh. Like, it, it, two of us, you know, two guys, one on either side of the table, just roll the laminate out slowly off the backer and squeegee it at even oh, pace, you know, my God. using your, your the, the only squeegee that you could work that wouldn't scratch it was there's Oshi squeegees. You know, Oshi's, yep. The, the full yeah, felt, the full felt ones. Yeah. There's block felt ones. It's yep. like, yeah, that's all you can use because if you try to use your, 3M gold squeegee, it just sticks to it. Good right, luck. right. All those big yeah, orange, then, orange Oracal ones with the uh -huh. weird, you know, half-ass felt yeah. thing on the yeah. end. It was more like Velcro, the the the, yeah. the, the female was, side really. of Velcro. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the loop side, or the, yeah, yeah, the loop side. Yeah. And then 3M was like, oh, we have this great new invention. It's called a squeegee sleeve. Yeah. You yes. Did. You know what? I brought that up a couple podcasts back and the person didn't know what it was. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, just think of like a, a dryer sheet that's oh, like, yeah. that's, that's hemmed on one side, the, the, the width of a squeegee. And you just like, yeah. you just slipped it right in. Done. It, yeah. Squeegee sleeve. Slide it in. And then now your sleeve, squeegee glides. You can use the same 3M gold squeegee and just slide right across. Yeah, those yeah, things I sucked. Oh. oh, I know, because what would always inevitably happen was your squeegee would come out of the sleeve or the sleeve would come off your squeegee and, you know, and yeah. <laughs> you're, you're playing the dance of up and down the ladder because you're dropping shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> how come nobody ever, never... fig how come nobody ever figured out? Why don't we sew the other end uh, so yeah. that way the thing doesn't fall out? 
Yeah, and and like I I absolutely hated using those squeezy sleeves. I think we bought like one pack of them. Yeah. And never again because I was like, this is I'm done. This, I'm not dealing with this. And I will it, use the Oshi squeegee forever. You know, <laughs> it's a it was a great squeegee. Don't get me wrong, but the only thing that I, sucked about it is that if you dropped it, it would just oh. attract all that bullshit off the floor like instantly. Oh, yeah. yeah, there you could you could watch like you could it held so much static. Yes, you could run it across the table. And like you could watch the dirt lift up off onto your squeegee, it's and then you flip it over and be like, "Oh yeah, look, they're static." <laughs> the invention of the geek wrap squeegees were like the best thing since sliced bread. They figured oh, yeah. it. They figured it out, like, and they hit the market yep. running with it. And I always wish that they would do one that wasn't sewn in and that was replaceable. I think they would have made right. a lot more money where you could rip that. That style felt off yep. and apply a new one. And cause honestly, that type of shore that they have with that type mm-hmm. of squeegee works well when you, it, it just glides on, on the wraps. It doesn't get hung up. Like the blue oh, yeah. ones from like Avery, if you try to try to use just a squeegee part, it gets like oh. hung up. Like it, yeah. it's not fluent when you're squeegeeing. It sucks. Yeah. It's that it's that Teflon, you know. They use that that Teflon one side, and then the other side has the you know the nice. I I prefer the ones that are the gold ones, the ones yes. that you know they're like oh yeah, it's wet and chrome, uh, right? You know, I who in uh, chrome? Don't even get me started. But <laughs> like, <laughs> I I love those things, man. They're the, they're they were the ones that I I always went to. And I always use the most, and then I recently discovered. Um, Pro Tools now, their suede blade, and like that thing, I, I I'm like I'm okay. I'm done buying some crafts now. I'm going to use Pro Tools now suede blades, and that's it. <laughs> the suede blades, those are the ones with the extra wings on them, like the yeah, red, yellow yeah, the one, wings. red, yellow, yep. and green, or whatever. Yeah, cherry, lime, and lemon. I think they yeah. get them in, and yeah. they're different stiffness. Or banana. Yeah, like, we can go banana. Yeah, but. Yeah, banana. I don't know. No, uh, you're not a banana guy. Uh, no, no, not really. No, all right, all right. Uh, yeah. Not, not big on the bananas. All right, not even in your fucking no. cereal. No, 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 no. I hate. I love it. A lot of my friends they tell me they're like, dude, I hate when they put fruit in salads. I'm like, I love fruit in salads. They're like, I don't know, fruit doesn't belong in salads. I'm like, why not? It's refreshing. It's green. Yeah. It's grassy. Earth. Yeah. Yeah, and then you get that nice juicy no. That yeah. nice juicy uh, strawberry I, or a nice freaking nice juicy grape in there. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, grapes are good. I, I don't know what it is lately, but I've been on like this headlong raisin kick where it's like anything with raisins in it is good for me. I'm like, whatever. Got raisins, awesome. I'll eat it. Really? Ra- like, raisins, huh? Yeah, I, I, I like out of the blue. One day I bought, you know, oatmeal raisin cookies from the store and it's just like Ooh. all right. Now it's raisins. <laughs> oh, do you ever warm it up? Mm. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. dude, mouth watering. I know. I know. I I I went like I bought a baker's dozen of these oatmeal raisin cookies, and I think I ate them in, like a weekend. Dude, like, oh, Girl Scout ridiculous. Girl Scout cookies full bloom right now. <laughs> oh my god. Oh yeah. The coconut. Oh, my god. See, no, I I can't. I don't like coconut. I can't. No. Ah, oh, come no. on, come on. I, like the. Texture of coconut just does it for me. So if it's like coconut flavoring, I sometimes get away with it. You like shrimp? But, coconut shrimp? I, see, and there's the other thing is like, I'm, shrimp is okay. I'm not a huge seafood fan. No. So, wow. No. So I eat it occasionally, but yeah. it's rare. Wow. If I, if I do eat shrimp, it's, you know, like shrimp Alfredo that I make, you know. So it's like, it's good stuff, but. A little mixed in with I, mixed in with something else, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there you go. Yeah, I, I, occasionally, occasionally I enjoy seafood, but it's just not one of my not not, not my cup of tea. Ooh, I love seafood. <laughs> love me some oysters, some lobsters. Oh no, you got no, You got to no, have no. that up up here in New England. You know what I mean? No, yeah. I mean, yeah. Lobster roll. You know, yeah. A couple oysters. Yeah, 
It's kind of in your blood, though, up there, it, you know? Well, yeah, I, I am, you know, European, so I, I you know, the, the cooking the natural fish and things like that yeah. is, is, is generally in my genes, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it, I, ironically, my, my, my oldest daughter, she loves, she loves, like, like old traditional meals and she'll eat anything. She'll eat octopus and like things like that. Cause my dad still makes it now. And she's right. gone to Europe with my parents. God, she's gone this. She's third. She's almost 13 now. She's been going to Europe oh. with my parents since she was like five. So she's been going, uh, God, seven, eight years now almost. Wow. And, uh, when you go to Europe and we're from the islands, there's no such thing as McDonald's. There's no Burger yeah. King. There's no fast food. At all. Mm -hmm. You basically get what's on the island and that's whatever's caught that day for the fish, whatever's been slotted for the day for the meat and like she'll go to town and then my little one, she's seven, she's such a picky eater, it drives me nuts. <laughs> she won't even eat like a piece of meat. It drives me yep. – I'm almost, I'm almost convinced she's going to be a vegetarian. It drives me right. bananas and it's yep. – you know, one is so extreme from the other, and I'm like, "How are you guys even sisters?" Like, <laughs> right? How does that work? It, it, and it's funny when you, when you become a parent, you you always think, "Oh yeah, the second one's gonna be so much easier." The first one was a breeze, and the second one's the one that bites you every time. <laughs> They're the ones that give you the, you know, run you through the ringer and make you realize, right. okay. There's the reason why I had a kid. They bring me back to the bullshit I used to give my parents. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, yeah, well, thankfully, my wife and I, I guess, were smart in the fact that we were, like, one and done. You know? We, Lucky. We first. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I, I think it was, she was maybe six months old. And I'm like, my wife's like, so are you going to go get the surgery? I was like, yep, I'm going to get the surgery. <laughs> oh, you got snipped. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it was, like, done. <laughs> wow. Wow. So like, I'm so, so thankful. How bad, how bad is that? I, I've, I've had a couple of buddies that got it done and they're like, dude, it's, it's probably like the worst feeling in the world for the first couple of days. You know, I, it wasn't bad. Yeah. Um, it, I, I didn't have a bad experience with it. It was like, you know, you, you get the surgery done, you go home and you're back to normal in a couple of days. It does like there were like maybe Two months afterwards were like, if I had a long day at work and I was on my feet a lot, I could feel it. I was like, oh, Ooh. it's just, just sore. But, you know, eventually it goes away and then it's just back to normal with no, no issues. So, wow. like for me, for me, it was nothing. It was like, oh yeah, I'll do it again. That, that's, that's a, uh, uh, what do they call that? Uh, like you're awake during the freaking thing, right? They just numb you oh, up yeah. and just fucking go oh, in yeah. there, snip, snip, see you later, yeah, yeah. sir. You're yeah. done. Yeah, yeah. Whew, I couldn't do that. <laughs> oh my god, you gotta put me out to pull a tooth. Like I'm, oh. I'm such a baby, dude. Don't let the tattoos fool you. Holy oh. shit! The ladies get so oh. mad when I go to like take blood or like go to the dentist and they gotta pull a tooth or like do yeah. like you know a, a filling and and uh -huh. then walk in there with the t-shirt all the tattoos and I'm like ah you know the needles kind of freak me out and they're like sir. <laughs> Your arm is covered in tattoos. How are you afraid of needles? I'm like, it's different. It's very different. It's one going in me as opposed to three or four mm -hmm. at one time mm -hmm. scratching the surface. Completely right. different. Yeah. Completely different. Oh, yeah, I squirm. I, I can't. I, I the dentist stuff drives me nuts. Oh, but for some it. reason, like that surgery was like no big deal. It's like, oh, okay, cool. We're in here. Oh, yeah. Oh. I'm just doing this thing, and we're talking about. I don't even know what the hell we're talking about anymore. By the time you're even done with the conversation, he's already done his business. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. It was, yeah, it's Oof. quick and easy. They're like, the only reason you can't drive home is because we gave you a Valium beforehand. So, yeah. you know, make sure you have someone to drive you home. And I was like, oh, okay, perfect. All right. Yeah. Can, can I get a couple more, you know, just in case later yeah. on, you know? Yeah. Well, they, yeah. And they said, you know, with scripts and meds, and I don't think I even really put them. Oof. And I was just, cause I was just like, eh, whatever. It's fine. Wow, just fucking go push through it, you know, yeah. whatever. Wow. Yep. I don't know yep. how the fuck we got onto that conversation. We went through like a weird little couple. Yeah. We took a couple laps when we should have went right, but holy yeah. shit. Yeah, oh. kids, kids, they'll go to you. Yeah, Start yeah. talking about kids and it's just like downhill. If there's, if there's any type of uh, birth control that I could give anybody out there is – 
uh, take care of your friends' kids for the day. <laughs> oh, that, yeah. That will fucking show you real quick that, you, you know, you're either ready or you're not ready. <laughs> right. well, I, well, listen, you're either, you either think you're ready or you know you're not ready. Right. The, 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 <laughs> you, you're never going to be ready is the problem. No. Uh-uh. So uh-huh. you, you might as well just if if you're gonna do it, you might as well get it out of the way early, because either yeah. either way, you're gonna things are gonna get messed up, and you're gonna figure it out as you go. And you know, yeah, I always tell a lot of my buddies that are having you know for first kids and stuff like that. I'm like, dude, you'll never be ready, and you'll never think you're ready until you hold that life. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. As oh, yeah. soon as you hold them for the first time, pff, all your worries gone. It's it's yeah. incredible. It's n- nothing. I like it's 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 like a spiritual thing. Like you just, I could say it, oh, yeah. but until you experience it, you you definitely oh, yeah. understand it and respect it. You're like, wow, this is crazy. Like, yeah. I get it. Yeah. All of a sudden, oh, I get what my dad was saying now. Yes. It makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, and it like comes to you as you're in the hospital there, you know, like, oh, this is crazy. Right. Oh, he I was got, right. I got to wipe asses? What? Like, <laughs> yeah. I got to wipe the yeah. baby's ass and my 80-year-old dad's ass. How's that work? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> right. Right. It comes full circle. Boat. Son, mm-hmm. son, I wiped yours when you were a baby. You know, now yep. you got to return the favor, you know? Yep, your turn. Yeah. <laughs> they tell you never to grow up. Don't be in a rush to grow up. They say. Yeah. You you, you get you understand what, when you get in your thirties what that all meant. You know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. As soon as you hit those thirties, like those early thirties, you're like, oh right. I think that's kind of <laughs> you know they always say like you're in a you know physically, mentally, whatever. You're an adult at eighteen or even twenty one. I yeah. I honestly think you are at full bloom you figured shit out life whatnot maybe when you're like early 30s i oh, think yeah. oh yeah i, I mean I I'm, agree. i mean i'm 35 <laughs> i think when i yeah. had just turned 30 31 i was like oh shit i kind of get it now you know what i mean yeah. you yeah. you, you kind of oh, yeah. don't take things for granted you, you don't you know, you, you call, you're creeping to 40. 40 is kind of like, ooh, okay, that's a different number, <laughs> you know? Right. It's kind of oh, yeah. scary. I know. I, I, when I turned, I think it was 32 was when it, like, really hit me. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, like 32, and then our daughter, who's three years old now, and it's like, as soon as she came along, it was like, I grew up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, ah, oh, finally, I get it. Yeah, it's yeah, freaking, it's, um, it's crazy. And it's amazing how your personal life changes your professional life too. Like having a daughter and watching her grow and learn, mm-hmm. like <laughs> watching the way she learns and she just learns with like zero fear and zero consequences. Yeah, It's like, oh, that's exactly how I should learn because look at how quick she picked it up. Right. <laughs> it's like, you know, two seconds ago, she was laying here on the floor, not able to do anything. And now she's like, you know, batting that stuff because she saw me doing it. And she was just like, oh, so this is how you do it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's monkey like, see, yeah. monkey do. Yeah. And it's like, why can't I just apply that same principle of, you know, I don't know anything. I should really listen to the guy who's giving me instructions and telling me how to do something because he knows what he's doing and I don't. You know, even though I may think I do, I really don't know what I'm doing. Mm. Like, listen to them. You know, and it's crazy how that shift from not being a parent to being a parent to watching her learn has really changed the way that, you know, I deal with my professional life, too. It's like, you know, it's just night and day. Yeah. If I had only been smart enough when I was in my mid-20s to be like, I need to just shut up and listen to what people are telling me. I would be way ahead of the game. Oh, <laughs> <But> yes. <laughs> here I am just now figuring this out. Great. <laughs> it's almost like a trap. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's like they give you little pieces as you're growing up and they're just sitting back and they're like, yeah, they ain't going to listen to us. 
they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna figure it out later. They're gonna think it's bullshit now and that they wanna live their life and when they least expect it, it's gonna creep up and they're gonna be like, Wow, I remember that. And I should yep. have taken that advice. And yeah, yep. every day is a learning experience, no matter what. And and taking a page out of, you know, you know, what your kids do day in and day out is is not a bad not a bad thing, you know? Yeah. Every... Yeah, and it's, it's amazing the difference in, in like the way a girl learns versus the way a, a boy learns. Like, I, you know, I only have my daughter and I, I see the way that she learns and the way that like my wife learns. And then at work, most of the time I'm dealing with guys and it's like you're trying to teach them and just like. Guys are idiot. stupid. <laughs> guys are stupid. Say it. It's all good. Know, yeah. I've said it Absolutely. multiple times. Women are so much smarter than us. I don't care. I know. I know. It's I'm alright with that. It's like, and, and they learn at such an amazing rate. Yeah. Like, they take everything you say so literal and yes. on the nose. It's like, it, it's sometimes their fault, but <laughs> nine times out of ten, if, if I'm teaching somebody something, the, the, you know, and I have a male and a female, the, the female's picking it up light years ahead of the male because the male's over here going, oh, I'm stupid. I, I know better. This is dumb. Why don't I need to learn this? It's like, no. <laughs> yeah. You know? And it's she's not about like, oh, that. yeah, I got it. Yeah. Rolling with it. I love, I love that we have so much, um, more female influences in the industry and it's, and it's continuously growing. Installers, oh, yeah. designers, uh, business owners, just, it, it's just amazing. I, I think this, you know, getting a piece of the pie in a male dominated industry and, Making it their own and doing what they do and mm-hmm. and fucking killing it, They're doing it better. It's just oh yeah, it's it's crazy. It's I'm yeah. surprised there there hasn't been you know more of a shift in in, in women owned rap industry businesses. It's just right. I I think I think the intimidation sometimes you know it would get the best of me. I would. I'd be like, yeah. oh man, you know, especially when you're dealing with a lot of clients, which a lot, a lot of clients would probably be a lot of males. And who wants to have oh. a con, you know, a conflict right. with a male and then a female over a bill or something like that? It's right. uh, the likelihood of it and, and the situation. It kind of sucks, but yeah, I, I know it's, it's so weird because like fracking is so much a part of, the auto enthusiast crowd. Yeah. That like you almost have to have a little bit of that audio and or auto enthusiast in you to be yeah. able to work in the industry, mm-hmm. especially like the rap side of things, you know, because you need to know the trends, you know, you need to you need to be up on them. You need to know what the client means when they come in and tell you, you know, I ramble off this car stuff and some of it even goes over my head because <laughs> you know, I, I, I like cars. I'm into cars kind of. Um, but it's, I'm not that big into it, you know, as some of the, some other guys in the industry. So it's yeah. like, sometimes a client will come in and they'll rattle stuff off and it just, you know, flies over my head and I'm just like, listen, you, you gotta, you gotta slow it down a bit. <laughs> Show <laughs> like, me a picture. Talk to, <laughs> yeah. Talk to me, talk to me in terms that I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <me> yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. yeah. And then like the, most of our sales force is female and like, nice. it's so great to have them because they tend to look at the whole picture, you know, and be able to get the whole picture yep. versus guys who tend to be focused on small areas. Mm-hmm. So they'll come to me with questions like, I don't know, they started talking about some car stuff and I didn't understand it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like, well, okay, what, what car stuff are you talking about? And usually I can, you know, guide them through it to an extent. And then there's times where I'm like, uh, yeah, let's Google that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, so it like it's great to have them in the sales, and and most of our design team is female too, and you know our shop manager she's female, and it's just like it works so perfectly. You know, that's just like it's great to have their input and their expertise. <laughs> yeah, dynamics are good, dude. I, I I think we have one, two, three, four. We got four, one, two. Three. I think we're four and four. At, at our at our facility, F- four males and four females, and yeah. each in each division, there's one female in that in each of those divisions. 
which is kind of yeah. cool. And I, and I honestly, oh, yeah. I just feel like, uh, a female salesperson, I think sets that tone. You know, you don't, as like, I've dealt with female salespeople and I feel like I, I, I interact better with them than I would yeah. a male. I feel like a male comes off a little, at least the ones I've usually, you know, dealt with, just come off a little pushy, a little <laughs> sales pitchy, like, it, like uh, as if they're a little used car. Yeah. Oh my God. That's, that is the worst types of, wherever you learn to be a sales guy, don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. Right. Like oh, if anything, no. don't be that guy. The shark right. waiting by the fucking door. As soon as you mm-hmm. pull up and get out of the car, they're at your door. Like, Hey, what brings you yep. in today? What can I help you freaking not buy today? Like, <laughs> right. it's, what can I, what, yeah. what can I convince you to go elsewhere for? You know, it, it, it's, you gotta work, you gotta work less. Let things come to you. Let things happen. And like, when you're coming off pushy and like aggressive, ooh, aggressive, that shit drives me crazy. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's like they're trying yeah. to sell me, sell me like, I don't know. Like you, you hear those pictures on like TV at night. You need this, and blah, 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 blah. it's like, no, I don't, dude. How do you know what I need? But no, I, I don't. I'm good. I feel like yeah. sealing the deal on big jobs and things like that. I think uh, 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 a woman can, you know, ninety nine percent of the time, I think the woman would get it over the guy. Just in pure, oh, yeah. just in pure, uh, sales tactics, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're, they're just, they're so much better at communicating. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, I agree. <laughs> like, they're just so much better at it. Yeah. It's like, that's why I never try to get into arguments with my wife because she talks so much more, more elegantly than I <laughs> do that, she, you know, like, like I feel it, like an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, no, I don't. You're like, uh, <laughs> you win. You win. You win. I don't want to feel dumb. I, and when I don't you, want to feel dumb today. <laughs> and when you lose, you win. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So either way, it, it doesn't right. matter. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess that's the joys that you have when, when, when you're married or have a spouse you've been with for a while. You've figured out the dynamics and what to do and what not to do. And <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's like the same with your, with my career because I've, been at the same center for 16 years now. I've had this pretty much same boss for 16 years. You know, like his father owned it and then he took it over from him, but I, I was still employed under him. So like, I know the ins and outs. <laughs> right. You've <laughs> seen the people come in and out of there for 16 oh, years. Yeah. 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 I, I've, I've seen them all come and go, you know, and the guys that were there longer than me, they all left and I'm just, still there for some reason <laughs> are you are you the veteran that's there now are you the old yeah the, the oldest person that's put in the most time yeah yeah wow yeah yeah the only person that has more time in it than i do is the owner rob he's, he's been there you know forever because his father started it and his father and his father's friend were the first two people to buy into the signs by tomorrow franchise Wow. So, like, our store and the Owens Mills, Maryland store, if I'm getting this correct, if I remember correctly, they're, they were the first two stores in the Signs by the Mark franchise. Ever, the first two to open ever in the beginning. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, you're, yeah. you're kind of in the piece of history a little bit for the franchise yeah. side of th- this industry. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, for them, yeah, our, the York, York store is kind of part of that part of that history that's amazing yeah. you know i always thought i always thought of franchises always being like i don't know like never like subpar it's just a franchise yeah. you know what i mean like you always think of like oh, yeah. chains of like restaurants it's just like ah, oh, okay it's just a chain yep. you know what i mean yep but a lot of people uh, take that shit seriously like you're not you know you get benefits being a franchisee over mm-hmm. opening up your own shop and, 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 and things like that. So I, I, I get right. both sides of the coin, you know, completely, yeah. but I always thought like that, that is one of the oldest ones that have been around signs by tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. They've, they've been around a while and like, you know, it's 30 years this year. They're celebrating 30 years. Wow. So it's like, it's, 
it's crazy. I mean, you've been there for half of it. Yeah, yeah, Holy I've been there for shit. half of it. <laughs> and like shit. when I started, the the one our designer, he was currently the longest employed person at in the entire franchise. Come on. So like, <laughs> yeah, she had been there. Uh, let's see, she was there. 11, 12 years, something like that. Holy when cow. She, when she finally retired. So, like, she was the longest employed person in the franchise history. <laughs> wow. She so ever get she anything? Kind of, she ever get anything? Like, did she leave? Or uh, get a, yeah, she retired. You know, wow. Was, she, her daughter had kids, and she was like, yeah, I want to go help take care of my grandkids, and off she went. Good for her. Yeah. Yeah, Good it's great. Her. I mean, I... She, uh, yeah, she's influential in, in me staying there and being there. And, you yeah, know, it's hard to see people like that go. But, you know, you go on, you move on. That's it. And you reap the benefits because the, stru- oh, yeah. the structure is there. You know what I mean? It's up to you yep. to maintain it. Yeah. You know, it's not yeah. – y- the, the figuring out part is, is, is done. Like you really, you know – how to, uh, you know, have employees, what, what you have to do to have employees, uh, how to sell stuff, how to maintain pricing. Like it's all structured there. Like there's, you take the, the, the guessing out of it and you basically go in, you find new clients and hope to keep them for 30 years. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's, you know, we still struggle. Yeah, like everyone does with figuring out pricing as new products come out and, you know, new stuff comes out, but like the old stuff we have down <laughs> to a T. Right. Right. Yeah. How does that work? How does that work, uh, with pricing? Do they have to give you some type of price guideline that you have to uh, abide by? Or is it at this point the, the franchise, you know how you, you're in the franchise for, I don't know, you're locked in for like 10 years. After that, yeah. you just, you're done paying your dues and you're just, you just pay or you're done paying whatever bill you have, but then you just start paying dues monthly and then that's it. You do your yeah, own thing. I, I, I think I, I really don't know how much of that works because I'm kind of on the outside of all that. That's, yeah. That, that business operator side of things. And I don't thankfully have to, you know, operate the business. Rob does all that. So. When it comes to that kind of stuff, I have no clue how it works. Mm. Not mm. a not a clue. I, I mean, I don't. I know for a fact that corporate, you know, basically the the company that runs the franchise mm-hmm. doesn't necessarily dictate prices to us at all. Really? You know, it's it's left up to us to decide what we should be charging. They basically just help you figure out what it costs. Right. To produce, you know, it's right. like, hey, this is what these are the factors you need to take into consideration when pricing it you know here's the guidelines here's kind of you know what we think how much do you want to make mm. <laughs> you know like figure it out on your own right so that's and cool it's it, it, it's kind of probably the better way to run things because every market is so different you know it's oh, like yeah. you can't you can't charge the same prices for the same product in you know, it, it, in Maryland, as you do in Pennsylvania, because people in Pennsylvania aren't going to want to pay those prices. <laughs> it's just a, well, yeah, that it's that's economy. that's why the 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 whole what is things cost uh, conversation usually gets tippy toed around because every area yep. is differently uh, placed. The demographic there, the cost per living, the cost. Um, minimum wage costs and, and, and things like that. It, it, it all factors into, um, mm-hmm. what you sell it at, unfortunately. And, you know, oh, yeah. unfortunately, a lot of us get our products from similar locations, whether it be fellas, Grimco uh-huh. or local, uh, mom and pop distributors. Um, yeah. but we all pay the same price. That, that is what, what, like, my I'm mind boggled about it's like we all pay the same price whether I buy something in Florida from fellers or I buy something right here in Woburn from fellers why mm-hmm. why is the cost of selling that product different you know right. what I mean yeah I know it's crazy it's crazy it's like everything that 
is involved in the job besides the product is now what is the deciding factor of the cost, <laughs> you know? Right, right. <laughs> it's like, how much is your electricity cost for your, you know, your your building that you're in? Well, uh, who knows? You know, how many tax, how much taxes do you pay to the municipality that you're in? How much, you know, it's just like, it's so area dependent, you know? That's why it's so difficult for people to understand how much things cost. Right. And even even wraps like it's that way everywhere and everybody struggles with it. Like <sighs> it's we, probably the most we, struggled thing about the business, I think. Yeah. Oh yeah. And and even any type of signage, it's so tough to, to you know, be able to price it out correctly. It's like, well, how much should we charge for it? And there's no one standing there going, Well, you should charge this much. Right. You know, because everyone's like, Well, we really don't know. <laughs> yeah, there's Figure no there's no guideline to it there's no, no. rhyme or reason everybody always <clears throat> thinks oh just go buy square footage it's the most fair thing to do well okay i'll go buy square <laughs> footage but is it right. am i wrapping a car or am i wrapping a wall <laughs> what's fair yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I can't charge you 12 dollars a square foot to wrap your wall because your wall is much simpler than a car right i'll get done with the okay. i can rip through square footage like crazy and charge you twelve sure. bucks, but you're gonna you're gonna be happy with a five thousand dollar bill, or on, no, on, no. on a small wall. Like, doesn't right, make yeah. sense. Well, flat surfaces, flat walls. I can do two hundred square feet an hour, and like you got that down. Yeah, uh, do you uh, time? Uh, do you, you have a time yourself? Oh yeah, all the time. Really? Oh yeah, yeah. That's I'll, cool. Before, before I start a job, I'll take a picture, and then when I finish the job, I'll take another picture, and then I compare those times. You know, and it's like, oh, that's how long it took me to do that job. Wow, I know Kevin. Kevin Kemp, he uh, he'll time himself legit on his phone. He'll put a timer on yeah. from when he yeah. starts. From when he starts, he'll break it down: cleaning time, yeah. and then uh, uh, mock up, and then install. Like yeah. how long that all takes? Because I remember watching. I think it was about a week ago or two weeks ago. He was down in Florida. He had James Tate with him. And another installer, and they were wrapping the side of a boat for JL Audio. And uh, yeah. I remember him showing the times of how long it took him to do right. this. I think it might have been like a 30-something foot boat. And they uh, killed it in like an hour. It was incredible. Yeah. yeah. Three guys on one side of a boat over 30 feet, I think. And in an hour hour and something changed. Like, holy right. shit. It's a lot. Yeah, that's yeah, that's that's booking it. Yeah, that's like you could tell in the video, like his back's all all wet from sweat, and it's hot <laughs> as balls in Florida. You know what yeah. I mean? Oh yeah. Not yeah. like us with the snow and seventeen degrees. You know? Yeah, I know. Uh, Ugh. It's like, oh, we have this twenty six foot box truck coming in. When do you get? I said like <laughs> today. You know, the client calls up. Like, we want to get this box truck lettered. It's just simple. It's nothing crazy. Oh. That's the logo, some text. <clears throat> It's a 26 foot box truck. And I'm like, you know, and the salesperson comes to me and she's like, when can I schedule them? And I was like, well, what's the weather look like? <laughs> yeah. It's a 26 foot box truck. It is not going to fit in our bed. Right. You know? So like, all of a sudden we go through these hoops of, well, let's wait till the weather clears up. You know, we'll look at nights and then we'll see what we can do. And it's just like, no, we'll ask the client if they have a place they can do it. And thankfully in this particular case, the client's like, yeah, we have a heated, Hey, you know, come here and install it. Oh, Perfect. Nice. Yeah. You know, I mean, sure, it's an outside install, but it's nothing. It's a box truck, you know. It's slap some FC950 on it and be done. Yeah, yeah. I almost feel like it's even, it's probably a lot faster. Well, this is me just saying it a lot, but faster to wrap yeah. a 26-foot box than it would lettering it because the back and forth, the measuring and pre-masking. Yeah. Going around oh, yeah. the rivets and making sure you don't get a rivet at the end of an E where it's like <laughs> all messed up and like crook. You know what I mean? It's just. Oh, yeah. It, those are the things you don't think about until you're in it. You're like, oh, uh -huh. man, I wish I would have moved it over a half an inch. You know what I mean? I, I know. And like that's the crazy thing about any install that I've done lately and, and lately being, I don't know, maybe like the last three years. Yeah. Like I, I went from this mentality of. I used to put headphones on and I would listen to podcasts as I worked. Yeah. And like, it was great because I got to listen to podcasts. Um, but 
at the same time, I noticed my quality of work would take hit, you know, because I'd be so focused on what's going on in my ears. And the kids would listen to it in headphones, you know, the headphones are jammed in your ears, just being, you know, right in your head. Yeah. That, like, I couldn't focus on what my hands were doing. Oh. So I started making, like, all kinds of just stupid mistakes. And, like, and then get pissed at myself for being like, oh, you shouldn't have made that mistake. You know, beat myself up. And then, uh, finally, you know, watching my daughter learn the way she was and, and, you know, pick things up like she was doing, I was like, you know what? I just need to focus more on what I'm doing. Mm. Stop listening to podcasts. <laughs> except, except for the All Wrapped Up podcast. <laughs> yeah, except for the All Wrapped Up podcast, which I listen to every week. Which is unfortunately not true. I yeah. As much as I, as often as I can. Yeah. On but the rides like, to work and the rides home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and for me, it's only a fifteen-minute commute, so it's like a uh, little snippets here and there. Lucky, and then I always, I, I, I binge it when I'm traveling for work. It's like if I ever have to travel anywhere, I'm like, oh great, this is perfect. We get to catch up on all these podcasts. Nice. And I start downloading everything and and go through and listen to them, and like it's great for when you have to travel. But like just taking that away, taking headphones away, and not listening to podcasts anymore, and just focusing on what I was doing, it's like. My insult times just went like through the roof, you know. Right. Like all of a sudden, I'm not in a bad way through the roof, but in a good way. Like I'm cranking things out so fast, and like not only so fast, but at the end of the day, when I'm done with it, I'm like, oh yeah, that's cool. I actually liked the way that came out, and like there's nothing about it that I'm kicking myself for doing. How about some ambient noise? Some a little bit of a little bit of you know music in the background, <laughs> just not so loud. Of, yeah. Uh, like, for me, it's hit or miss. It depends. It, it really depends on the day, like, Ooh. or the work that I'm doing. Sometimes I will, I will gladly, you know, put on some alt rock and crank it up really loud and be fine with it. Yeah. And then there's other times where I'm like, no, I need to focus. I need to concentrate on what I'm doing so I won't listen to anything. You, you can know? hear a pin I'll drop just, in the shop. It, yeah. I just, it's literally just like, just zone out everything except for what's in front of me and just, you know, wow. use your hands. And it's like, it's made such a difference in my ability to, you know, insult and understand what's going on in front of me. Mm. It's, it's just crazy. It's like it's one of the things that I try to teach young guys that come into the shop. It's like, I know you may want to put headphones on. You may want to listen to music. But I learned the hard way that doing that only slows you down. It only makes you worse. You know, like focus on what your fingers are doing. Put your brain in your fingertips, you know, and, mm. and be there. Don't be, you know, in your head listening to music because if you can focus on what you're doing, you're going to get it done so much faster. Yeah. You're going to be so much happier with the end result. You know, it's like focus on it and concentrate. It's hard to do. It is hard to do. It, it takes mental practice. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, for me, I'm completely opposite. I'm not going to lie. I have to have something going on in the background. Even if I'm yeah. at my computer, <laughs> excuse me, um, even if I'm at my computer, like sending off emails, I got to have a little bit of something playing in the background. It's just yeah. the music puts me in that mood where I almost feel like, you know, probably, I mean, give or take, we've been installing probably similar years. You probably got a, a year or two ahead of me, but I always felt like yeah. when I was installing, my hands almost knew what they needed to do and just went to right. work when I needed them to like, it just, yeah. my eyes would see, okay, I can't squeeze you this way. I got to go. And my hands would just do their own thing. And the background yep. noise, it was just filler and just made my body move and got me upbeat. And I would actually work a lot faster with, and, and honestly, when, when you don't have any distractions, like if you're working late at night, nobody's in the office. Oh. And you oh, fuck, you got the whole joint to yourself. Holy you shit. You and the vinyl. <laughs> I would, I would almost work, I would almost rather work third shift as an installer and just rip uh -huh. through vinyl all fucking night because oh, I feel yeah. like you get so much more done. I know. Can we, it's can what? we, can we create a third shift vinyl installer? Uh, I, uh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Why not? You know, why not? Working at night, yeah. so a couple guys during the day, a couple people at night. Why not? Yeah, Double a couple time? people during the day selling the jobs, and then at night you install the jobs. Why not? I find well, that to be very, you know, 
very useful, to be honest with you. Think about it. Oh, yeah. They drop off the, that day. They have it all night. Next morning, ready to be picked up. Okay. Good to yep. go. There it is. All done. Right? Yeah. We should we should we should go into business. Yep. On the franchise. Late late franchise. night wraps. <laughs> late night wraps. Yep. Late. Dot com. Uh, I don't know if late night wraps would sell that well. Uh you don't That's like it? Is it get yeah, win? I don't know. Win I don't it. know. It's you know, treading yeah. that line a little bit. Yeah. Crossing yeah. it. Crossing yeah. it. Late, late night late, late night wraps. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds. <laughs> oh yeah, that was those late night rap guys, wasn't it? Yeah, well, yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, they, they banged yeah. it out in and out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Overnight. <laughs> yep. And now all of a sudden, it's all over the rap police. <laughs> oh Jesus! Don't even get me started. <laughs> oh, uh, that, that that is one of the Instagram accounts that gives me the most anxiety. <laughs> You don't want to be on it. <laughs> I know. You don't want to be on it. It's like, oh, who got who got who got screwed this week? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. It's like, and I did. I saw a couple, man, maybe about a year ago. I saw a guy I know. He, he's, he's in the industry. He's been in the industry for a while. Pictures of him on there. You know, like, oh, oh. this is not how you do it. And I'm just like. Yeah, I get it. Those pictures make it look bad, but you're seeing like a split second of the job. <laughs> you're not yeah. seeing the finished result. Right, <laughs> like yeah. Go, go go look at the finished result and then tell me that those pictures belong on the rat police and you're, mm. you know, night and day different. And even like, even talking to him about that info, he's like, dude, he's like, I felt so bad because at one point, I was just confused about where the vinyl was going. It was the first time I was working with KPMF, and like mm. I felt like I didn't know what I was doing. I'm like, yeah, but look at the finished result; it's fine, you know. He's like, right. yeah, I know, but I felt so bad about it. And then I saw it man on the rap release, and I was like, let's just not tell him about that. <laughs> it, 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 you know, I get it. I get why whoever does the rap release or runs the rap release. I get why they oh, yeah. do it. I get it. Whatever. Oh yeah. But you know what? It makes you think because not only have they had people that we might not know on there, but they've had well known installers on it as well and called them up. Oh yeah. It makes you yeah. it makes you, you know, not be complacent and you know, maybe you gotta oh, yeah. you know, go through it with a fine comb before it goes out or Sharpen the sharpen the pencil a little bit more next time, yep. but you know, oh, it's, uh, a lot of hate on that page issue. though. Fuck, a oh, lot of hate. Oh my god, I, I don't even bother with the comments. I, I'm just like I can't. I, I can't love reading them. Don't don't get me oh, wrong. I, I love reading people okay. like. Nope. It's a mix. It's an and it's a mixed bag. People are like you're a piece of shit. Why do you got to call people out? <laughs> Other people are like yeah, that sucks. That corner should have been talked or. You know, telling them a yep. technique. You know what? Yep. Whatever. To each their own. Yep. That's why social media yep. is there. For shit, oh, yeah. For shit like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. It's great. It, it's it's such a motivator, too, you know, to be like, make sure you do it right. Because there are people that watch. <laughs> yeah, well. Not just your client. You have one Not of two. You could be on Rapper Mapper, the Rap Promoter, Rap Folio, or you could be on Rap Police. <laughs> Right. It's like, oh, <laughs> shit, you know? Uh, take your pick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's let's not go yeah. rap police. But, I mean, I get it. It, it. It's And you know what? Given that that person is out there doing that, you know, who knows who's going to take a picture and submit it to them, you know? That makes oh, yeah. you – not that it shouldn't make you worried, whatever, but it's like, okay, it gives you a little bit of motivation. Like, okay, this has got to be 100% before it leaves. Just yeah. one more quick look around. Just make sure everything's talked. That way, there's no yep. there's no issues. But you know, yeah. Let's let's pass over one more time the heat just to make sure that I actually squeeze you where it looks like I squeeze you. It's right. Not, no skippers. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Like it is what it yeah. is. It is what it is. Yeah, it's a great motivator, though. You're absolutely right. It's oh, hundred like, percent. 100%. But if you've had training and yeah. you know how to properly install certain things, eh, you should be all right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's it's amazing sometimes how, like, there, there's times where I'm even skeptical about, like, there's no way the vinyl is going to last. Like, mm. there's no way this is actually going to work. <laughs> like, 
this is completely ridiculous. And it's like, it works. And you're like, Hmm, cool. Yeah. I actually, I, I, I actually know what I'm doing, which is surprising. And <laughs> on top of that, the product is actually the way they say it is. It, it's yeah. sold the way it is. You know, it's like great. Right. right. That's crazy. You've got, you've got some training underneath your belt. Uh, let let me in a little bit on on what you got. You get the the 3M preferred, right? Yeah. And then you yeah, got the, the uh, Dynoc, uh certification as well. Yeah, yeah. The architectural endorsement Ooh. from 3M, which was a great experience. Um, you know the the 3M preferred experience was not the best experience to have, I and mean, I think it's just because of the place where I took the certification at. Where'd you and take like, it? I took it down at Geekraft. You did? And yeah, my experience down there was not that welcoming. So it was a really tough time. It was tough down there. How many people were in your class? Well, it was two of us taking the certification. Yeah. And the guy that was there was from New York and he was, it was his second time. He failed the first time Ooh. and he was back to try it again. And then they had, six to eight students that were there taking their kind of training program. Mm -hmm. So you're in an environment where you're trying to test, you know, your skill, you know, improve your skill to these people while there's students there that are learning it. And there's like instructors there instructing it. Well, a instructor at the con. And it's like, it's such a crazy environment to be in. And on top of that, you're dealing with the fact that I, when I walked in there, I did not feel welcomed. And throughout the process, there were some things that, you know, kind of went down that made both myself and the other guy taking the certification exam not feel welcome there. Mm. <laughs> it was just like, it was just so nerve wrackingly stressful and like such a just bad experience. But, I managed to pass by the skin of my teeth. I I did actually fail one of the stations, but with the certification program, you can retake one station as long as you have enough time mm -hmm. at the end. Right. So I, I got lucky in the fact that I was fast enough through all the stations to be able to retake the one that I failed. Which one? Which one uh, did you fail in? I failed the rear quarter panel on the HHR, the rack uh, on the. Rear quarter pan. That car, you know what? I get why they use that car. It's probably got the oh, yeah. worst body lines ever manufactured on a fucking car. I oh, get yeah, it. The bumpers. Yeah. The yeah. bumpers, the, the quarter panels, all that bullshit. It sucks. Yeah. But at the end of the day, since you've been doing it for 16 years, when's the last time you did an HHR? Never. Exactly. Not once. What ever done the fuck? Car. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they don't <laughs> I, even I make those cars anymore. No. Why do no. they use them to, for the certification? Why can't they just use, like, harder panels and just use that for that, I, you know? I, like, I honestly think that you would get more from the program if they're like, here's a Ford Transit. Good luck. Yes. <laughs> give me a realistic car that I might right. wrap a hundred times in my lifetime. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Or here's a Nissan NV. Well, I mean, the only problem with using a Nissan NV is by the time you got like three or four students in, the paint would not be on the vehicle anymore. And right. <laughs> and, it, and, and going back on the rap police, how often do you see an HHR that's failing on there? Yeah, never. Zero. Yeah. You see normal Zero. cars failing. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. that to me is a red flag. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I get it. I get it. I'm not, I'm not opposed to not doing it with the HHR or doing it with the HHR, but like, give me something I'm going to always like, I'm going to do all the time and it's realistic and that I know I'm only going to do it wrong when I get lazy. Right. Like, yeah, I really think one of the reasons they use the HHR is because it's a small vehicle. It provides like a lot of challenging elements to it all oh, yeah. wrapped into one package. Oh yeah. So it's like you can really test someone's skills on that one vehicle and it's it's well thought out. Like I mean, 
the guy who runs that, you know, the, the 3M training program, Marcio, he's got it, he's got it down. He knows, you know, what to throw at installers to trip them up. Mm. So it's like every station in that certification program has a flaw designed into it. Oh, I know. Like, I've already heard panels are too yeah. short and you got to fucking make up for it. Yep. Shit like that. I've, I've heard through the grapevine. I'm like, wow, they really, they really thought that out and giving you the worst case scenario that you yep. could walk into as a quote unquote mobile installer. And you, yep. you you've got to make, you know, you got to make do with what you have. Yeah. And they, <clears throat> excuse me, the restrictions on like, what you can make mistakes on mm-hmm. is very small. It's the the margin of error is minimal. Mm. But there's lots of those points built into the system along the way. Mm. And even like your time, it's it they do it in such a way that you know you have overtime to deal with. So if there's a certain area where you're not that fast at, mm-hmm. you can use some of your overtime to kind of cover your bases. And then areas where you you're faster at where, you know, you can blast through it. That's great because then, you know, that saves you time. It's well, so it's like, very well thought out. <clears throat> yeah. It's, it is the most thought out program out there in my opinion that mm. I, you know, and I've only taken the 3M and I've taken the Avery certification. You have. Excuse me. Yeah. I, I failed that and that sucked. <laughs> Yeah. Wow, what 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 got you tripped up on the Avery one? <clears throat> so, uh, I got through the written exam, which I am horrible at written exams. Like Same here. They, <laughs> <laughs> Likewise. Even even when I did the endorsement, I was taking like I started taking the written exam, and I looked at the instructor and I go, "I am probably going to fail this," and he's like, "Nah, you got it, you're good." I was like, "Just you wait, <laughs> I yeah. will fail it," <laughs> you know. But anyway, so I got through the written exam on the Avery. And it came time to do the, you know, the, the install portion of it. Right. And the class that I took at Avery, they were short a vehicle. So in order for me to actually take the certification, because I did one of the color change courses, in order for me to take the certification, I had to strip portions of my vehicle and let one of the other students use my vehicle as the test platform so that I had a vehicle to take it on. So I was like, I'm I'm all in, you know, at that point. The instructor mm. was like, he he looked, he went out and looked at my car. He's like, you want to strip some of your car so you can take the certification? I was like, absolutely. That is why I'm here to take the certification. Wow. And and he's like, you're really sure you want to strip your car? I was like, yes, I want to strip my car so I can take the certification. So anyway, strip the portions that needed to be stripped. In the next day, you know, we do the exam, move on to the vehicle side of things. And it was the rear door is where I just fell apart. It was like, I didn't level it to their, you know, specifications in their training program. It yeah. says that you need to run a tape line from center hub to center hub and center it off of that, level it off of that. Right, right, right. And like, okay, I didn't do that. I just kind of eyeball leveled it. But at the same time, there's a guy working on the front fender, you know, taking his certification exam on the front fender. So I would have to interrupt him to be able to run that tape line. Mm. So it's kind of like, I was like, well, okay, whatever. You know, I'll just get as close as I can and hopefully they'll be okay with that. And then came down to the end and I left a small piece of backing paper behind the window perf. And it's just the slightest, you know, the smallest little piece of backing paper. And that was it. Yeah, you know, there's two things. The, the print wasn't level and the bathroom paper got trapped. Holy shit. And like, that was the first station too that I did. Oh. And they don't, what, when you fail the station, that's it, you're done. Oh. Everybody taking the Avery certification that day failed. Wow. Nobody passed. In fact, the other, there was another guy that was doing the exact same thing I was. And he failed because he ran out of time. So it was like, it was an interesting experience. I was just like, wow. That's, this a, is... that's a tough pill to swallow. Yeah. Oh, and like, shit. Ever since then, I've been, I, I'm very public about, you know, like what it was that tripped me up. Mm. And like, I put it out there and I talk to guys about it 
you know, all the time, like, yeah, you may think, you know, you're good. And I, I went into it with a lot of years of experience. Right. You know, I, I've been rapping for nine years, but, you know, rapping nine years in a sign shop is different than, you know, rapping nine years in a rap shop. Rap shop, yeah. Completely different. Yeah. You know, like, last year I wrapped five color change vehicles, and that was it in a, an entire year. Right. You know, and that was that was kind of on the high side for us. Wow. So, you know, nine years of experience sure sounds like a lot, but at the end of the day, nine years of experience at a sign shop. So it's, it's different. It's a mix. You know? It's a mix. Yeah. 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 So I went into it, you know, into the Avery with 3M certification under my belt, 3M preferred, you know, thinking that, oh, I've got this in the bag, you know, no problem. Right. And not at all. Wow. And like, it's such a humbling experience to be like, <laughs> I messed it up. And like, you know, the instructor, he was like, I can't, he was like, I can't let you go. I was like, yeah, I know. He's like, Ugh. I feel bad, but, you know, I can't let you go. And I was like, oh, I get it. Wow. So, Ooh. You just tuck your tail so, a little bit and just move forward. You know what I mean? Yeah. You don't let, yeah, I mean, I it doesn't, around. it doesn't justify, you know, what you're doing in your shop, in, <clears throat> in your shop and what's going on. It's just, yeah. It's more of a, I don't know. I would say it's more of like a, a pride thing. Like, yes, oh, I yeah. actually know what the hell I'm doing. Like, and yeah. I have the proof that says I took a course, an intense course. Not everybody, you know, passes and I was able to pass. Right. Done. You know? Yep. Feather in the hat yeah. type of deal. Oh yeah. And that's really, uh, when it comes to the, like, you know, the Avery program and the Oracle program and, and all those other ones, it really is just a feather in your hat. Yeah. The, the crazy thing about the 3M program and being 3M preferred is you actually get work from 3M. other, you know, other people. You actually right. see the work come in. Yeah. And I, we have, it, it takes a while. It does take a while. Like, I went through that certification, you know, the preferred certification, and it was like, it literally felt like I wasted my time because months went by before we saw the first job roll in. Right. And then all of a sudden the first job rolled in and then, you know, job number two and three and four. And by about six or seven in, you're like, oh, okay, this was actually worth it. You know, right. this was financially, this actually makes sense to have. You're you making know? a return then, on what you yeah, spent. And, yeah, and then the crazy thing is, too, is like, so that person came to you through the 3M website. Mm. Well, they're a national company that supply graphics all over. Mm. You know, so you do a good enough job the first time, and guess what? They don't go to the 3M website and look for another preferred installer. They come to you. Right. You know, and they go, hey, we really like the work you did last time. Here's another job. Go do it for us. Right. You know, and you, you build that relationship and that rapport with this company that just basically hands you jobs. And it's all because you went and took the 3M preferred certification. It's like, why wouldn't you go do that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's good and bad. I, I mean, I look at both sides of the coin because I'm very biased as far yeah. as, as yeah, far yeah. as like it being a plus being certified, but then it's also a, uh, a minus being certified because mm -hmm. as you know, there are people out there that are certified that either still don't know what they're doing or putting oh, up yeah. bad work. And I just feel like, you know, that whole mentality of, you know, see something, say something, you know, it just doesn't resonate very quickly with them. You know what I mean? No. Cause they always say, Oh, if you know a bad installer, that is certified. We don't want to have our name attached to that. And, right. you know, nothing ever, never, nothing ever happens. You know, they're still yeah. on the list. They're still doing this. They've changed names three times. Like, what the hell? Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, there is absolutely no doubt about it, a flaw in the system. You know, it's like, it is not, the 3M system is not flawless. That is for sure. Yeah. You know, like, holes. even some of their, even some of the guys that have the instructor certification, I, I, I've seen some of their work firsthand and like, I'm there taking the certification exam at Geek Raps, and I'm looking at one of the vehicles and I'm just like, this is the guy 
who's teaching other people and who's overseeing my certification process. Like, why do I want to be associated with somebody that produces this kind of work? <laughs> right. You put them on a higher pedestal. You put oh, them yeah. You put them up top. They're the best of the best. They know what they're doing. They're, they're the ones signing off on my certification. So why wouldn't yeah. they do what I do every day? But in reality right. is they don't. <laughs> like, right. there's no, like there's no sugar coat in that. Like they don't. No. No, there isn't. Like, just because you have that certification doesn't mean you're a good install. It right. just means nothing about your install. It system. means you know how to install it. Doesn't mean right. you're going to install it right every time. <laughs> you know? Really, what it means is you installed it really well once. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> when, it, when it counted, you were there. Right. Right. <laughs> oh, shit. It's like, it's like the first person. Uh, per- no, I can't even say the word now. <laughs> the participation of them. Yes. You know, it's like, yes. You did it. You did it. You did it. But the, the thing that you really take away from it, if you're, you know, if you're really dedicated to the industry, if you're really dedicated to your work, right, you take away from it more than what those guys do. Oh, yeah. And there's a sense of, you know, and there's a sense of pride that goes with that. And like, I love it. I, 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 you know, get the 3M preferred shirts. I get our, you know, the image 360 stitched on it. I get my name put on them. I show up places and do installs and guys are like, Hey, you work for 3M? And they go, no, I don't work for 3M. I work for image 360 York, you know, 3M said, Oh yeah, I know what I'm doing. Right. Oh, and they're like, oh that's cool. You know? And it's, it's nice to have that, you know, to be able to go to them and be like, Hey, look, I'm here doing this job because somebody else somewhere. 3M, you can say that name and everybody knows it, you know. It's Nobody. confidence. It's confidence. Yeah, yeah it's, they're like, oh, it's, what he's doing. It, and it, guys take advantage of that confidence, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I believe yeah, it. I, I, have, I have seen some jobs that 3M preferred installers have put up, and I, I walked through the install, and I took pictures of everything that was wrong. And I went to the, the GC, and I was like, look, you need to get this stuff taken care of and fixed. Mm. And he was like, "Yeah, I don't care. It's not my thing." He's like, we hired these guys from New Jersey. They came out. They did the work. You know, half the time they're here drunk, and I'm just like, "Yeah, great, awesome. Jesus. I love being a free. I love being free and preferred because of these guys." <laughs> you know, but, <sighs> and like I was there to fix their mistake, which was great because now I'm making money. You know, not me personally, but Image 360 is making money because these guys couldn't get the job done. You right. know, so it's like. You pick up the crumbs sometimes, mm. and then a lot of times it comes back to bite you too. You know, it's like, oh, what are you going to? Oh, it's just, and, and I know everybody out there has had stories and seen things and experienced things to this type of magnitude, and, and it's nothing. This is this type of topic isn't uh, uh, taboo or new to anybody. It's it's out there, right. and, and and we ha- we ha- you know you want to hold. You know the 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 rap industry at a higher level and and respect it as a trade and and all this and all that. We have to bring these things to light. We have to you know oh, yeah. voice our opinions, voice you know just have a voice. You know a lot of us right. sit back and just like ah fuck another rap job eight you know eight shit you know what the hell like right. that's not that's not what I'm about. But you know I want to know who did it. I want to I want to see their work i want to you know maybe help you know some way somehow you know and it's it's nothing on putting someone down or you know uh being a big bully or anything about it it's like okay who needs help like there's shops out there that want to help other shops like it's not like the sign industry like you and i know back in the day (laughs) <laughs> late late nineties, early two thousands, where everybody shut their mouths and didn't say shit to nobody. Uh right. fuck John. He takes all the work. He can go fuck right. himself. You know what I mean? None of those side oh, yeah. guys ever talk to each other. They're all assholes. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. rap industry like, is different. It's different because it's a newer industry. I think hey, this is this is my opinion on. It's a newer industry. It's run by younger people with a different mindset and a different yeah. outlook. And like it's so weird being 
in the sign industry and then, you know, doing raps at the same time and watching those two industries kind of collide and then separate and collide and separate over the years. Right. And like, it, the, the rap, there's so much that sign guys can learn from rappers. Yeah. And there's so much that rappers can learn from sign guys. Yep. Yeah. You know, it's like, you really have to, you know, take that into consideration. And, and it's, it's just amazing. We, you know, as a franchise, there's other signed franchises that would move into the area and we'd be like, oh, great. You have to compete with these guys. Right. And all of a sudden turn around and they're sending work our way because they don't want to deal with it. They're like, yeah, go talk to those guys on their signs by tomorrow. They'll take care of it for you. And it's like, well, how'd that happen? Right. Right. It's a different, you know, because, different times. Because, right. Because that, that sign shop owner is a younger guy. He's not the guy who's, you know, closed and closed mind and, and thinks that there's trade secrets and stuff like that. And it's like, dude, there's no such thing as a trade secret in this industry. <laughs> there's no room. There is no room for trade secrets in this industry. And I think that's one of the things that I really enjoy about the rap industry and the sign industry is the fact that everyone is so willing to share their, you know, be like, hey, look, this is, this is, this is my experience. Yeah, it's, 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 it's funny. It's funny. It, it, it just, it, it amazes me how, how like, networking now is so more um forgiving people want to network people want to collaborate mm -hmm. more than they ever yeah. did uh in the sign industry everybody's like yeah you know out for blood in that in that side and uh you know with the industry i think everybody wants to collaborate more hey can we do something together let's work on this project and call it our own you know it's it's nice but it's a it's a Breath, it's a, uh, how would they, would they say, uh, a breath of fresh air, yeah, so to say, yeah. you know, yep. a little different. Uh, yeah, it's great because like that whole mentality of, okay, we, we, you know, we've learned stuff and now we want to share it is really where Image 360 as a franchise is starting to push. And I'm starting to see some of that, you know, stuff happen at the top yeah. where it needs to happen. Yeah, and getting in touch with some of the guys at the top that are kind of movers and shakers nice. for you know getting that certification, that training out there to other people, and like they've you know come to me and been like, "Hey, look, do you like teaching this kind of stuff?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I enjoy it." And they're like, "Okay, well, we want you to do this now." <laughs> like, you know, and, and they're like, "This is the program we want to put out there, and this is what we want to be doing." And it's just crazy, like. Crazy humbling and ridiculous to think that these guys want me, <laughs> like you know, a guy who works at a sign shop in you know this podunk little town, <laughs> like you know, be a part of a big part of this training program for other franchises. It's just, it's. I, I really hope that that side of things takes off. Take and advantage it be, of it. Why yeah, not? It, yeah, it would be it would be very fun. I mean, we've even. Image 360 York has kind of started, you know, my boss and myself have kind of started branching out to other Image 360s in the area because there's a lot of them. And even like the Signs by the Mars and because we're in a large network like with the Legra Print Network and all those guys. Right. So right. we start, started branching out to them and being like, hey, look, this is what we have. We have a guy who's been installing vinyl for 16 years. He's been rapping for eight, nine years. He's three and preferred. He will come to your shop. You know, he will show you how he does it. He will teach your guys how to do it in their shop, you know, in your shop, right. in your comfort zone. Right. You know, and as long as you pay, you know, uh, the, the fee that we're asking, he'll come and, you know, be there all day, be there two days, whatever it is. And like that type of program just never existed back in the day. You know, you couldn't convince people that it was worth your time to do. Mm. And now, like we put that out there and, you know, several of the places local that are close have contacted us and been like, yeah, we want to do it when. <laughs> yeah. You know? it's like, yeah. Oh, wait, what do you mean when? We thought you were going to say no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, and the one guy that did reply to it, he's like, I thought it was like a spam email or something. He's like, I didn't know what to think at first. <laughs> wow. No, like, we want to, we want to teach you what we know and get you guys up to speed. And then at the same time, you know, we got the corporate side of things, the guys who run the franchise going, 
we need to get a better training facility. You know, we need to have people who know what they're doing come and train people at our facility. We want to offer these programs to people inside the franchise right. and inside the network. And it's just, it's just, a, it's awesome to see that happening because like I've had to deal with learning it on my own. Mm-hmm. And, you know, back in the day when it was like, Hey, here's, IJ-180, CV-1, right. and here's a magazine where they talk about installing it. Good luck. Right. You, you know, it's like, uh, I just don't want people to have to deal with that ever again. And no, you feel bad. Yeah. It's like, sure, I mean, I got there, but look at how much money and time I wasted getting right. here. Right. I don't want to see you in that same situation because it's just frustrating. And if we want the industry to grow, we have to be, you know, people who've been in it long enough have to be willing to say, you know, I need help. This is, I, I'm here. I'm here. Right. You know, talk to me. Right. Let me teach you. You know, don't, there's trade secrets. There is no such thing as trade secrets. I hate when people say, oh, it's a trade <laughs> secret. It's this, it's that. It's like, no, it is not a trade secret. Yeah, it's not a secret. Once you figure it out, it's, everybody right. already it's, knows about it. You just took a like, lot longer for you to figure it out. <laughs> Yeah, and sometimes I do some of the raps, like I'll, I'll do it at the shop, I'll do them live on Facebook, and, you know, like maybe two or three people watch it, whatever. I don't do it because people watch it. I do it because it helps me be a better installer, because, like, I have someone over my shoulder constantly going, yeah, you know, do it right, do it right. Just that live feed running. And, like, I've gotten flack from guys on Facebook, they're like, you shouldn't be doing them live, because you're giving away all the trade secrets, and it's a business, and you don't really understand, you're destroying people's livelihoods, and I'm just like, no. <laughs> no, YouTube is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Like, right. Like, you're complaining about a guy who's doing it live on Facebook and four people are watching it. Two of them are his family members. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and your wife's in the background. Good job, honey. Right. right. Love yeah. it. Yeah. Hope you're home, yeah, you're like, home for no, dinner. Go, go look at, you want to talk about, you know, if you want, if you think that the industry is being destroyed by guys like me, go look at YouTube and you will literally have a heart attack. Yeah, I mean, in anything, there's always. I think what you're doing on at least your social media platform is cool. You 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 go pro stuff. You you make videos. You you go live, and and you know, not only is that out there for other people, but it's it's more of a, uh, you know, a sense of you know where you're at. You can look back and be like, "Oh shit, yeah, I remember doing that." And damn, oh, I'm, a yeah. lot, I'm a lot faster now at that than I, than I was back yeah. then. And it's just a good judgment. It, it's good uh, feedback. It's it's you know, it's good to put a, a timestamp on something where you can look back and be like, "I I remember I did that in 45 minutes. Can I do it in 30?" You know, right, right. Why why well, why not? I remember thinking that. If we'd produced it this way, it would be faster. And oh, it was not faster at all. Right. <laughs> like I will never do that again. Let's, yeah. Let's figure something else out. It's crazy. It's just uh, it, like it's 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 mind blowing that people still to this day think that you're taking money or food or out of their mouths because you're teaching them something the right way. Right. Right. What? What? What is wrong with yeah. you? Yeah. Right. You know, like we, we, we live <laughs> we live in the information age. But yes. You don't want to share any of the information, but you you don't understand. Like it's it's just so beneficial for the industry for people who have been in it. And even if you've only been in it for two years, like, can you have an awesome understanding of it? I want to know how you're doing it. <laughs> you know, right. because right. you're. You, you know, you're probably doing it better than I am, and I, I want to figure out why you're doing it better than I am. That's why I love this platform because, and I'm, and I'm, like I said, I'm biased. I want to talk to people that have been doing it for two months, one year, ten years, whatever. Yeah. Like I want to talk to everybody. It's not just you know the heavy hitters like in the industry. I want to talk to the newbies. I want to see what their minds at, what struggles they're dealing with, because. I remember when I had started, I had different struggles than what people have to deal with now. Back in 2000s, yeah. it was literally so much easier to just get started g- given that the industry was just so new. Now that like right. 
it's everywhere. A lot of people know about it. Cost of materials have been, you know, a reasonable cost of equipment is really low. You can yep. you can get into a, a wrap shop under fifty grand, said oh, and yeah. done. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just so much easier. And 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 not even getting into training, how much more training there is than there was back then. It was just you know, they come to you with the three M um with that new three M uh uh trailer. They just come to your facility and train yeah, yeah. right right in there what yeah like, they show up with the mtv and they're like yeah yeah <laughs> you know it's 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 like just you're insane. still Ackland. here's here's a guy who absolutely knows what he's doing right like <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's, yeah it's 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 unbelievable and you have these pe- these people coming to your shop and setting up and having you know other people around your area come come in and do these trainings and and it's it, it's mind-blowing that shit was never around when when we started. Not as much as it is now. Everywhere, no. every state has one. Every week, there's a new. You know, Justin's in a new town every every other day. It's oh, yeah. it, it's crazy, crazy. Yeah, and like it goes to prove that this industry has been unsupported by education for so long. And like. <laughs> If we really want the industry to go anywhere, it needs to be properly supported by education. Yeah. Yeah. We, we hire guys all the time who have zero experience, just like I did. Right. Zero sign experience. You know, I had never touched vinyl in my entire life. You know, well, 21 years, but you look to do. Yeah. <laughs> before, <laughs> you know, before I started there, like, and, and that's what we, to this day, 16 years later, we we're still hiring guys who have no experience in the sign industry. Yeah. You know, and, and they, they come in with no knowledge. It's like something needs to change, you know, and, and from the insult side of things, if you want to learn about sales, right, there's all kinds of programs to learn about that. You want to learn about design. There's all kinds of programs to learn about that. Mm. But, you know, like production and installation, uh, good luck. Right. Yeah. You got to find you know, that. In, 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 you know, working as a, an intern somewhere or watching right. somebody else do it. That's the only way you learned. Yeah. It's crazy. And I know there's only two school, two schools, as far as I know, there's only two schools in the nation that have incorporated, uh, sign and rap industry, uh, programs in their trade, uh, their trade classes. There's a, wow. there's a, there's a, uh, facility in, uh, California. I don't know where in California. Um, yeah, obviously. Yeah, but there's, <laughs> there, there's one there. And I think that was the first one that opened. And, and, and honestly, there's one in Massachusetts, which I didn't know until, <laughs> until about a month ago. I, I was doing, I was working a trade show up yeah. in Boston. And this teacher came up talking, you know, talking about, you know, rap business and this. And I was like, oh, cool. You own your own shop. He goes, no, I'm actually a teacher at a trade school. And we bought (laughs) rolling printers and laminators and sign equipment and banners, like everything you need to run a, a sign shop and a rap shop. And we have a class that we teach the kids how to do it. And I'm like, what? I'm like, where? I didn't think he was from around here. He's like, in Massachusetts. And I'm like, come on. You, you're, you're kidding, right? He goes, no. Right, we right. just started, no, no, no. just started it, um, a little over a year ago. They started. Wow. Insane. Insane. Guy's been sending me emails. He does, uh, tours of different shops and nice. the, the kids get to watch like production at, at different yeah. shops and what goes on. And it's, Man, I wish I had that when I was in high school. Oh my god! Yeah. Well, soon enough, I give it. I give it. Maybe. Um, I don't know. Give it ten more years. We'll be hiring people straight out of high school that know exactly yeah. what to do. You know. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's 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 funny how like signs and rapping is one of the few remaining like trade craft, you know, trade industries around or craft, I don't even know what I want to call it. Like one of the few skilled labor industries that's still, you know, pumping away and still right. doing good. Yeah. 
auto body, like a, auto mechanics, wood shop, carpentry. Yeah. That's all there. That's normal stuff. I don't know why yeah. they haven't incorporated the new age of trades jobs. You know what I mean? Yeah. I know. It's like, it's so crazy that we end up hiring guys more likely than not, and for whatever reason, we always end up hiring guys that are musicians. <laughs> musicians? <laughs> wow. Music, yeah, or like in the music industry somehow, you know, or, or in the, you know, they like to play music. They're, they're somehow musically inclined to get to all these in time shops. It's like everywhere. Interesting. That's there weird. are, yeah, there are a lot of drummers. I've seen a lot of drummers, a lot of guitarists. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah it's like guys who know how to use their hands. Yeah. And it's like that's that's the, the bare bones of it. That's the basics of it. You know yeah. how to use your hands? You're good with your hands? Yeah. Great. Here's you know, an industry for you. You know what your phalanges are? You know how to use those things? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, oh. You don't have any phalanges? Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> I love playing with my kids. I'm like, show me your phalanges. They're like, what's that? The fuck is that? Like, oh, get I fingers. Yeah, don't. <laughs> I learned something new today. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's crazy. It's crazy. All right. Yeah. I know I know dinner times long <laughs> long gone. And yeah. I've I've yeah. all welcomed my stay here, so we're gonna wrap this up. <laughs> we're gonna wrap this up. It's it honestly, Ryan, this has been cool. I, I appreciate you reaching out and, and, and talking. I know we've been DMing and stuff and and sending yeah. emails back and forth. I it, this has been an absolute pleasure. You know, getting your story yeah. and your background and sharing some some tips and tricks, man. Yeah, absolutely. It's been enjoyable on my end too. Like it, uh, it's uh, it's fun. Yeah, <laughs> it's time. always fun to talk to like-minded people, especially when there's so few of us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I'm I'm willing to talk and network. Why not? I'm I'm yeah. not a, I'm not a sign guy. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not one of those sign assholes. Yeah, yeah, one of those guys. One of those guys. Yeah. Unreal. Yeah. Um, is there anything that we maybe didn't bring up that you wanted to talk about? Any topics or anything? Ah, uh, man, I really don't think so. I mean, you know, you always have in your head how the conversation is going to go, and like, oh yeah, we'll probably talk about this and that, and you don't ever. And it's like, you know, I, I feel like we pretty much talked about everything that was kind of important to talk about. So yeah, and everything that wasn't. Uh, right, yeah, it, and lots of lots of unimportant stuff. Too. It was a first <laughs> to talk about a vasectomy on the show. <laughs> Thanks for popping oh, my cherry on that one. <laughs> great, I'm going to be the vasectomy guy now. You're going to awesome. be the vasectomy guy. We're going to dub you the vasectomy oh. guy. Hey, I oh, know awesome. Ryan. That guy, he's got this yeah. ball shopped. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's the, it's the vasectomy <laughs> guy, right? Yeah. Uh, you're gonna get racked. Yeah. You're gonna have to come up to RapsCon, and, and you're gonna be you're gonna be that guy. Hey, there's Ryan. I know Ryan. Yeah. I know Ryan. Yeah. He's that guy. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. How 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 the boys today? Yeah, oh, yeah. How you God. feeling? You on your feet a lot yeah. today? Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. I'm not, you, I'm not gonna make fun of you, dude. I'm not gonna make fun of you. You, you've got bigger ones than I do, whether they're <laughs> cut off or not. Tink, tink. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could never. I honestly, for me, whoo, that's a, it's a yeah. tough, tough spot for me, man. Whoo. Yeah. I'm whatever. like jingling in my seat like something happened to me. It's like <laughs> I get, I get the willies. You know what I mean? You get the- yeah, I can't watch that shit. Surgeries on TV. I get like I see blood, I pass out. Like I'm good. Oh no. Oh. No, no. Pick. And that's bad to be in the industry that you are to see blood and pass out. Oh, because, it's man, ha- you- dude, it's happened. A cut on my finger? Oh, dude. Oh. I go oh, yeah. down, light head, take a knee. Ooh. <laughs> shit sucks. I, I've never passed out from it, but I I've, I've had the experience of someone passing out on me. Come like, on. Because finger He's in the bathroom. I'm like, I need to go get more paper towels. Are you okay? He's like, yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I start to walk out the door and I see him look up into the mirror and he looks up in the mirror and goes ghost white. Oh. And I was like, oh, uh, he's done. Yeah. And I tried to catch him in time. I couldn't get to him. His head smacked off the sink, you know? Oh. And I was just like, oh. I hope sucks. he didn't feel that on the way down. Yeah, he, he was out. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't even remember it. it was, oh, it was Jesus good. Christ! Yeah. Like I, I've never passed out from it. I, you know, one time I freaking dropped an exacto right into my wrist. 
Oh. Complete freak accident. You have, you have to, you, you've got your hands full of stuff. And this is before, you know, breakaway blade knives and all that right. wonderful stuff, which I love them. <laughs> but like, hands are full of stuff. I got exactly in my hand. I got my squeegee. I'm going up and saw something and it just slips out of my hand and right into my wrist. Oh. <laughs> I was just like, well, this is going to be interesting. You know, grab it, pull it out. Like nothing. I was like, okay, this is cool. And then, you know, to the beat of my heart, it starts squirting out. And I was like, God, I can't be good. Oh, <laughs> stitches? No, I went and they're like, yeah, you just nicked the artery. It's oh not my- bad. Like, oh. it'll be okay. <laughs> cool. Oh, my God. That's when you start getting the super glue. Hold it yeah, together. I super glue it. Yeah. Yeah. I Like, the first thing I do is reach one for cold water. Like, you get cold water on it. And you get cold water like on your wrist, especially with your hand. Yep. You know, cold water on the wound, and then cold water on your wrist pretty much stops the bleeding immediately. You really? Know? That cold water, yeah, that cold water restricts all your blood vessels and just doesn't allow it to go anywhere. Fuck! I learned so, dude. I have learned so much from talking <laughs> to you today. Holy uh, I, shit! I, I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I've learned a lot too today, and it's, even just listening to the podcast throughout. You know. Every time I listen to it, there's something new I take away from it. Yeah. Every time. Me too. And that, and that one with uh, Brian Strauss from Rack Labs, and he was like, yeah, before I lay PPF, I, you know, squeegee the, the hood or bumper off before I apply graphics. I was like, dude, that is amazing. I'm doing that next time. And, like, sure enough, like, a, a week or two later, I'm installing graphics wet applying, and I'm like, spray it down, squeegee it off. He That's it. it. It was like. There's no dust under it. I was like, wow. That's <laughs> awesome. It. So, yeah, I mean, just listening to the podcast is really, I've, I've learned a lot and I really appreciate, you know, what you're doing. I think it's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. That, that really means a lot. I, I, I love, I love sitting down and, 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 and talking with everybody and sharing stories. I, I think the stories is what I love the most is hearing yeah. that, that, that struggle and, and that, you know, that fire that you had back then to just make it work. Cause I, I know I've been there. I know what it felt like to eat, oh, yeah. eat ramen noodles and, and, and macaroni and cheese for months <laughs> to, to try to put food and provide for your family. It's nothing worse than, you know, you know, being a dire needs of creating a paycheck for yourself and reaping the benefits years later where you can, you know, have employees or you've done well where you don't have to struggle anymore. And you've, you've kind of quote unquote made it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh yeah. Those yeah. are the best Wait. parts. Yeah. I, I, I feel like I finally made it because I can work and support my family. Right. <laughs> like, oh yeah. All right. This is exactly how it's supposed to be. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. You, you don't always have a, a plan or a path and, and sometimes things are, are brought, <laughs> you know, to your oh, attention yeah. and, and create opportunities and open up doors that you would have never, you know, gone through. And life is all about opportunities. Take them as they come. Oh, yeah. Good, bad, and yeah. different. You never know what's behind that door. It can open up yeah. something else. Yes. Yeah. Don't, don't turn it down. Go for it. <laughs> right. Right. Agreed. We'll end, we'll, we'll end the show on that note. <laughs> that works for me. <laughs> love, I love positive. Positive yeah. feedback at the end of the show. Um, oh yeah, it's always it's always a good good way to end it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, Ryan, let everybody know where they can uh, find you on social media and website and get more information about what you're doing. Yeah, so the Image Three Hundred and Sixty York website is it's straightforward and simple. It's Image Three Hundred and Sixty dot com slash York, and that'll that'll get you to you know our website um you can find me on instagram i believe it's like ryan underscore image 360 york I, it's pretty simple i hashtag everything i post is image 360 york so i try to keep it you know pretty straightforward and simple so. for sure you got to put an icon on your uh on your instagram name i always get weirded <laughs> out i'm like why does he have a white circle <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know no, the funny thing is that started like on Facebook years ago. I changed it to white because of the way the format and the layout work. Yeah. And like, it, I've just left it ever since in, in my life all the time. She's like, when are you going to change your profile picture? Let's, I'm like, let's update it. Let's update that. I'm like, 
I don't think I'm ever going to change it. But now I'm like, I keep thinking, oh, I should probably change it now. It's, it's, the joke's over. <laughs> I know it's you when I look through, like, my feed or something, and I'm looking yeah. at people I've already looked through throughout uh-huh. the day, and I see the white dog, I'm like, this Ryan. This Ryan. Yeah, and, and like, hearing that makes me just want to leave it because it's like, oh, it's I can stand out in the crowd. <laughs> hey, listen, if you can't stand out, you don't fit in, right? Exactly. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Awesome. Ryan, again, dude, absolute pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day yeah. to sit and chat. And uh, I wish you well for the rest of 2019, brother. Yeah, you too, man. And uh, don't don't beat yourself up too much. It's just, you know, it's just work. What's up, folks? Hope everyone enjoyed this episode. Thank you to everyone that tuned in. And thank you to our sponsors. Thank you to IBOW Training, offering a variety of training options, such as training at your shop, group training classes nationwide, and even private design print profile training through remote login. Learn more about IBOW at IBOWtraining.com. Thank you also to WePrint Wraps, the industry's number one source for wholesale printed wraps, offering free nationwide shipping across the U.S. and Canada on all orders over $500. And don't forget... Exclusive listeners of this podcast save 5% on your next order when you use promo code all wrapped up at checkout. See why industry pros love them and visit weprintwraps.com. Till next time, folks, that's a wrap. <laughs>